You know what time it is. 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 Hey guys and welcome to Little Black But 91. We are talking to you guys about Ready to Love. Yes, we're talking to you guys about Ready to Love. We're dealing with uh, <laughs> episode 8. It was quite the interesting episode. We had Camille, uh, we had uh, Camille and Cornelius. Camille met Cornelius' uh, ex. We had obviously Dante uh Dante and uh Shiloh and uh Mameen I bring some Mameen as well meet the family as well we also had um uh, we also had uh to see up Phil Shiloh that was also interesting okay and then we had Zadia and Naeem mm. there's just a whole lot of interesting kind of conversations that were happening all across the board I'm not really sure um I'm not really <laughs> It, this episode, like, uh, it was given what it was given, all right? It was given what it was given, right? Um, yeah, the nails on Walter's ex as well was a bit of a surprise. Um, just really unfunctional. I just thought to myself, how functional can that be with those nails? But anyway, um, yeah, we, I think we're all surprised by uh, Dante's ex, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, this, 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 this again, this episode uh, was all right. It was all right, you know, because I think we saw... More than likely, how everybody really isn't meant to be paired up. Um, we saw Sydney and Phil conversation as well. I don't know if you guys picked up on Sydney saying that because Phil uh, didn't look at her, she became intrigued. But that's a story for another day. Um, so, yeah, there was a few different conversations that were going around. And we're going to kind of dive into that, give you guys opportunity to get involved, have your say this week once more again. Um, so if you're new to the channel, do me a favor, like it, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notification of uploads. We appreciate you guys. Stay locked and stay loaded. We are, uh, again, once more talking about Ready to Love and we're dealing with episode eight. Okay. Uh, someone said Frank and Phil played Aisha's episode. Do you know what? I even forgot, you know, I forgot. Yeah, because why didn't she meet any of their exes? Unless maybe she did and they didn't show it because what? Why did they not let her meet the ex? You know what I'm saying? Like, why did they not let them meet the ex? They sent an uh, episode when they did send an Aisha home, then turn around and show her at the end. That upcoming episode so weird. Yeah. Uh, like I said, these shows, the storytelling is off. You know, whoever's doing the storytelling now needs to fix up on the storytelling. We are lost blood, uh, you know. So, hey, um, but yeah, uh, we got to see Cornelius X as well uh, with uh, Camille. I don't know if you guys noticed. Did you guys notice the switch up by Camille? Did you notice the tone? Her voice was normal. Like, Honestly, it was different. It's almost as if she was going for a job interview. She changed her voice completely, um, you know, towards uh, uh, in the cut scenes and everything like that in this episode. Um, when she was talking to the, the lady and even when she was talking um, in the cut scenes, the, the, the behavior completely changed. I said, mm. I said, who's this? This is not Camille. I know. Where's all that uh, uh, acting that she was doing beforehand? And I said, mm, I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling this right here. Uh, but yeah, there was a complete shift in tone and change and everything as well. But again, Cornelius wants to ignore the red flags. In fact, let me just bring a clip. I want to show you if I can show you a clip. So she can be. Let me show you a clip because I want to see if I can get a little cutscene of Camille. Can I get a cutscene of Camille talking? I'm about to get a copyright in a second. Let's not, let's not play around. But yeah, um, yes, uh, it is, it's on. <laughs> And again, you know what I'm I'm saying about, you know, this situation between Camille and Cornelius. He is like trying, like they either they're trying to stay on the show, or Cornelius is absolutely trying to ignore the red flags. Like he is honestly ignoring the red flags. There, there is no way. No, I shouldn't say there's no way. He might be very naive. He might be just very naive. Um, you know, I I honestly think. He's literally missing stuff. The ex says she gave good answers. I mean, she did because, I mean, I guess she did. She gave good quality answers because Camille knows how to change when she needs to. Like, I think there's a little clip here when she does it. But I got to ask some direct questions. <laughs> when I saw Cornelius' ex for the first time, I, I did get a little worried because I did think she was going to try to ask one million questions and try to make me. 
I don't know if you notice her tone is even uh, is different. You know what I mean? The tone is different. So it's like, yo, like someone said that the, the painting. What was the painting? I didn't even see the painting. Was the painting art? Uh, was it mad? Was the painting mad? I, don't, I didn't see the painting, guys. Y'all gonna have to serve me if the paint was mad. I didn't see it. I'm not gonna lie to you. Was the painting off? Was it? Was it? Was it? What was the painting saying? Someone describe it to me. What the painting was saying, guys. What was the painting saying? <laughs> I'm not even sure. <laughs> Y'all bad man. You don't can't let this man live, bro. What was the painting saying? Um... Yes, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Someone said it was ugly. The the painting. <laughs> let the person live, man. <laughs> <laughs> let the person live man you know what i mean let the person live uh cornelius admitted that he that to tommy that he's ignoring red flag of course he is um you know bro i think i think the staying on the show is more important right now it's it's it's, it's getting political um it's getting political like let's listen a bit more Oh my internet wants to. So is celibacy a part of your experience? I'm not sure if you've had that conversation or if he's still on that wave. I don't know. I'm not that deep into his personal but where are you on your faith wall? Hmm. Uh, to be honest, so the ex situation, yeah. So the, the ex with him, did the, the ex with his situation, yeah. I, I honestly think uh the, the, I honestly think that Maybe either either Cornelius, like I said, Cornelius probably maybe acting, maybe Cornelius, um, you know, uh, you know, doing this for exposure from the show, or maybe Cornelius is generally is ignoring the red flags and missing stuff. But Camille, Camille is completely different from his ex, completely, right? Energy different, figure wise different, right? And maybe he's think, and maybe I'm I'm thinking if he generally is being generally being real, he maybe he thinks he's winning with Camille. You know what I mean? She looks like a little bit of a baddie. Let's be honest, she got that body, yaddy yaddy yaddy. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe he's thinking he's winning. Let's keep it a buck. He might think he's winning. He might think he has, you know, something something different. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, I, 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 if he's genuine, I can see why there's a switch. And but. You know, this is why we, someone else said, I think earlier on, that he's play, he's moving a if he's never had Gala before. He's moving a if he's never had Gala before. And that's what we're kind of seeing with him, right? Um, someone said, rainbows and butterflies, the picture's a bit sus. Lord of mercy. Exactly. This is a step up for him. Yeah? It's a step up for him. Uh, it's a step up for him, for real, for real. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of them, bro. I'm gonna lie to you, bro. I'm tired of them, but you know what? Um, again, that scene where they're in the corridor, like that for me, again, it's like, yo, uh, you know, it's like, yo, like, brother, you're in the corridor, she's telling you when she's gonna leave. These are the things that show us that she's controlling, and and here's the thing. She may think she's joking, but if you keep making that joke, it actually becomes part of the reality, right? So she actually has to stop making those jokes, right? Like after a while, you have to stop making those jokes because it's no longer a joke. When you keep making those jokes about, oh, like, for instance, when you're going to leave, da, da, da. Of course, we're going to make the deductions that you're controlling, right? Um, You know, it, it's, 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 it's a lot, bruv. Someone said it's not a real step if it's not a real step if the person's unbalanced. It's a step because of how men look at beauty, the same way that women will look at somebody's finances. We, it, the the step isn't that the person's a better person. The step is simply because she's finer than your ex girlfriend. If you believe that, do you know what I'm saying? So for him, it might be a step. I'm not saying it is definitely, but the step doesn't have to be better. Uh, real question that needs to be asked is why do they break up? Yes, exactly. That's the real question that Shimon asks. But wasn't asked. Yeah, you know, him and Naeem seem like they're hoodwinked. And the reason, again, both him and Naeem have the same kind of energy. Y'all peep that? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, uh, you know, I'm just saying, Naeem and Cornelius be having the same energy, hence why they fall for the same, they fall for the same type of energy from women. 
You know what I mean? Right? They fall for the same type of women. So uh, I'm not surprised, to be honest. I'm not surprised uh, that both Naeem and uh, Cornelius have kind of overlooked certain things. I, I think Cornelius more so than and Naeem. I think we've seen a little bit of, I think we've seen a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, 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 of Zadia, but I wouldn't say we've seen it so much. I wouldn't say we've seen so much. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say we've seen so much from some Zadia. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I think both 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 Zadia and and I and Cornel, Cornelius, Zadia and, and Camille, they both they both run things. Do you know what I'm saying? And if you don't have a strong boundary and backbone, you're gonna be finished. It's just that simple. You they, these two are very strong dominant forces, you know, as women. And until you actually um show them good boundaries, you'll realize, bruh. Um, you know, that you know, you'll realize that, bruh, it, you you can't handle these women, right? And that's the truth of the matter. That's why I'm saying they both have the same energy. If you don't give these two good boundaries, they are going to run you amok. They're gonna run you amok. Um, but like I said, Zadia's one hasn't necessarily been so wild. It was a friend, it was an ex that was telling him, oh, I don't know how emotionally she's going to be able to support you the way you need to, right? So that that in a sense, I think, um, that in a sense, you know, you know, I, I think that's where Naeem kind of wised up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But like, again, because people, I think people are trying to stay on the show and they ain't got other options, we're looking like we're stuck here, because, do you know what I mean? We're looking like we're stuck here. Don't stuck, don't, not don't, uh, Naeem is stuck with Zads. You know, uh, Camille stuck with Cornelius. Cornelius stuck with Camille, sorry. Yeah, it's Slim Pickens. It's not, there's not much out there, cuz like they are now in the final throws of the show. Do you want to quit the show and, you know, really be true to yourself? Ah, man, there's, there's, there's positivities of staying on the show. Maybe you get paid more. Who knows? Um, and this, yeah, exactly, Monique. Exactly. I was like, I was like, uh, ding, 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 red flag right here. Right, he's never in a serious relationship. What? That includes you as well, X. What do you mean? Like he ain't never been in a serious relationship. Like, do you know what I mean? I was like, baby, what you talking about? What y'all talking about? Uh, you know, yeah, the X was wild, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. The X was, the X was coming on strong, blood. You know, X was coming on strong. You know what I mean? Someone said that the X wants him back. Yeah, man, it's mad. It's mad. Yeah, it's mad. Do you know what's interesting? If you watch that scene when actually uh, Zadia comes in to meet uh, Naeem, I can tell she is over. She's tired. I don't know if she had a long day. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's a long day or a busy one, but Zadia looked tight. Like she looked like she was over it, bruv, when she came to meet Naeem. Let me just go up slightly, but you can see it. Right? She looked like she was over it. You get me, but she looked like she got into the swing of things as they were talking. But when she came over, it looked like fam, my girl was like she she was done, like she was she like she was over the tinkers. You know what I mean? Someone said Naeem played the ex dust. Listen, Naeem was not trying to have it, bro. You know, like Naeem was not trying to be involved, bro. <laughs> he was not trying to be involved. Uh, so, so, someone says she can't she can't socialize without a drink. So kale. <laughs> She's not social. Yeah, potentially. Oh, yeah, there's no you. reason. Chicks are surviving. Hi. What's going on? <laughs> oh, hey. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Uh, how Zaddy was not trying to be on it, bro. She was not trying to be involved, bro. I, and I get it. Listen, I get it. Listen, I'm not trying to say it's the easiest thing to be involved with. I, I wouldn't lie to you. It is not the easiest thing to go through. Um, It's not. Oh, someone's sending me a photo of the... the... <laughs> you know I'm even mad, kids. <laughs> it's a photo of Cornelius thing. Yeah, that's a bit wild still. Not my, it's not my, it's not my uh, bestest photo, but I hear what you're saying. Um, <clears throat> that's not my kind of interest, but I hear what you're saying. Let's see, uh, what are people saying here? She drinks when stressed. Yes, I think she does. I think she does. I think she does feel a little bit stressed and she starts drinking and just trying to calm herself down. Do you get me? And and chill. And do you know what? It's interesting. So um 
Zadia's I, I I did a video on this and uh, you guys will see it. Um, it's on Zadia and um, it's on Zadia and uh, Shiloh, and I said about uh, Zadia's questioning, right? Because Zadia's questioning left a lot to be desired. Like uh, I think you have to see it here back then and you did and now you're here and you've seen that growth and he's still somebody that you would pursue and date that to me is a good sign if there's anything else that you could tell us about Dante hold on let me not get copyright so I'm going to show you in the next 10 seconds right the next clip I'm going to show you it was Shiloh and Zadia and the way they asked the questions was considerably different um again it's something to it's something to kind of just point out that when you ask a question a certain way there's a tone attached to it there's a destination attached to the answer that you want from this question. So when she asked the question, I was like, babe, are you trying, do you want the man or do you want to interrogate the man? Which one do you want? Because if you want to interrogate him, then you're asking the right questions. But if you're trying to actually, uh, you know, get, get a hold of him and, and actually have a, and actually get to know him a bit better with the ex there, this might not be the best question to ask. You know, uh, I think that's it there. Yeah? Look at this. Oh, my internet want to play up. Oh, no. Why won't you play up? Oh, my days. Look at this now playing up on me. You've seen baby. that, bro. Oh, no, no. We need to get here, baby. Fine. If there's anything else that you could tell us about Dante in a way that, like, says Dante is for you. But also, to add to that, a warning shot. Like, you're a trouble girl. Okay. So, the, the two questions there are very different but they're similar right in a sense of the fact that Charlotte just asked what are the signs that he's feeling you right which is a positive um you know question which means you're going to get a positive answer back and then Zadia added on top not only did she, she didn't even wait for her time she actually added on top as if it was a, a good additive so what about um what what about the warning shots that he's at? it's like bebe and you don't when you do that you don't even realize that in that small space You've actually got. A, you're gonna. You're actually gonna be easily. Uh, you're gonna easily be uh, compared because you've put your question right next to Shiloh's. Okay, and then the question um, that you've asked is from a point of negative negativity, right? So naturally, the the answer is gonna come back to you. It's gonna be negative, and and you know, um, it's unfortunate, you know. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that, that she played it off that way. And again, she may have felt like <laughs> someone said when you're bad vibes, <laughs> when you're bad vibes, you ask questions like that. And again, you know, it, 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 it speaks more about your heart and where your heart is when you're asking those kind of questions. Um, and so that's why the question was like, I was like, oh, no, um, you know, yeah, I mean, no, it's not it's not that it's necessarily a bad question, but the timing, like you said, the delivery, it's the season. If you ask that question right after, right next to the question that was a positive one, right? And it clearly wasn't only that question, right? It clearly wasn't that only that question because later on, the ex actually said, Zad is asking questions to try and basically point holes in your character and point out flaws. So it's not just that question, his her whole energy and maybe other questions that we didn't see that are making it feel like you are trying to interrogate to just to, to, to tear down. Whereas what well, you see with uh where you see also with Shiloh, it's a very positive question. Right? And the reason why I say it's negative is because it requires a negative answer. If I ask you what are the warning signs, the flip question, the flip part of that question is to speak about the positive. What are the signs are that you're actually feeling me? It's what Shallow did. I'm not trying to pray Shallow above Zadia. I'm trying to I'm trying to get you to understand. When you ask a question, you have to think about what answer you actually want and that what signal it actually sends. So it's not necessarily a very bad question, but it's a bad question because it it, it, it promotes negativity, right? And if you do it two or three times, it's gonna be annoying. You know. Exactly. <laughs> so what has he been doing wrong? No, no. How about what have I been doing right? Right? What what have I been doing right? That's the question we should be asking. Right? What have I been doing right? And again, you know, it's it's all about energy. 
you know, uh, you know, it's all about energy. So it's all about asking the right questions. Like, for instance, you know, when you see uh, Mameen and Sydney's interview, you don't hear any of them bringing out negative questions, right? Mameen asks a very good question. What kind of man does he want? She could have asked, what kind of man does he not want? That would have been the same equivalent. You know what I mean? So when you ask that question, you've got to really think, what kind of question am I trying to ask? And what in what kind of tone? And then what also, what, what am I trying to, what answer am I trying to get? Because the question here of saying, what kind of man, what kind of woman does Frank want? Now they can describe the good qualities. You put that person in a good place, you know? Uh, but then when you ask, oh, what kind of man doesn't he want? Now suddenly they've got to list all the negatives. It brings a mood. So, you, you, you know, that's why I'm saying about the, the energy of the question, um, you know, being exactly AO. That's exactly what it is. It's a half full, half empty situation. Some, some people are pessimistic and some people are optimistic. But, you know, for a lot of people, being op pessimistic isn't really the way to go. You know, exactly. And that, that's what it is, you know. Um, you know, so Zan is not a bad person. She's not a bad person. We're just saying that there's some other areas that could have worked a bit more differently in terms of the way that she asked certain questions. You know, I like Mommy's energy, man. Mommy's energy is righteous, man. You feel me? Um, and I think that I think Frank should probably go for some of Mommy, but they have totally different concepts when it comes to sex. So I don't think he needs. I don't think he needs to be going anywhere near there. Do you know what I mean? But I think Mommy would be a better show for Frank. I think Sydney is great. Sydney's great. I just don't think Sydney's great for Frank overall. I think they, they both got some nice energy, but I think if we were to think long term, I think Mami might be a better choice. But like I said, because of the sex issue, she's not a better choice. So it, it, it would have to be Sydney, you know. Um, Frank, <laughs> so also Frank has already been seduced. <laughs> oh, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Already been seduced. I hear you, you know. Um, but yeah, man, you know, it's it's crazy out here in the dunya. Uh let's have a look. Cause I think I think let me see. Yeah, like there was some nice questions. Frank and Mameen. Oh, I put a sound off. I gotta go sing some more. Okay. All right. Everybody's All right. so busy. I know, right? So if I had to make a decision today, I have to choose one of these two ladies to go home with. So and do you know what? His ex, Dante's ex also is really cool. Like, her energy is really nice. Anyone, anyone else peep that? I like Dante's ex. Her energy is correct. Um, I like I like the, the, his ex's energy. It seemed like a, like she had a nice smile, nice warmth about her. You know, didn't, I didn't get no shady vibes from Dante's ex. Like, his ex seemed like a really cool, nice, down-to-earth kind of girl. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't know. Energy seemed all right, right? Let's see if I can play his clip. Y'all want to play me? You're so busy. I know, right? So, if I had to make a decision today, I have to choose one of these two ladies to go home with, who would you pick? I would say Shiloh. Really? She didn't ask for all the dirt. Like, she was really looking at the positive, the goodness in you instead of your flaws. Guys, be careful what kind of questions you ask. Because the kind of questions now determine how someone's going to see you. She said it quite plain and clear. You know, the questions that were being asked by Shallow were, you know, looking at the goodness in you. The questions by Zadia were looking like wanting to know all the flaws. Um, and I think it's just Zadia's way of, like, maybe, you know, Zadia's way of just being able to, like, go, hey, look, you know, I want to know all the bad stuff early. I think that's what it, I think that's what it is for Zadia. For Zadia, I think it's just about having all the answers early. Uh, you know, I think that's what that's what it is. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I'm not I still again, I'm not even necessarily fully against that. Yeah, it's more of a case of I think that's just her way of trying to set it up early that okay, get all the bad stuff out of the way, then I know exactly what I'm dealing with, you know. Um, so yeah, someone said this is these random people are not the a recent ex. Mm. I hear ya, I hear ya, I hear ya, I hear ya. You know, I hear that. Mm. Okay, no, I see, I see. Someone said, uh, why 
why would you only want to know the good about someone though? I think it's less about knowing the good about someone, but you know, imagine I started the line of questioning about how bad you are. No one does that. <laughs> let's let's give it a buck. We don't do that. We don't ask questions to find out how bad the person is. That's not how we question. That's not how we get to know people. We don't ask. So what's the worst thing you've ever done? And what's the what's, what's your character flaws? What's your like when you do that? You're setting yourself up because you're just filling yourself up with negative information, right? Um, and and it doesn't make to be. It doesn't make for being around a good experience about somebody. This is what I'm saying about how energy is put out there. Our questions are energy in a sense, right? So when you're asking your questions, you don't ask the worst things. Like if I'm interviewing someone, I don't ask for the worst things about them. Now, I may address issues if they're on a TV show, yes. But if I'm interviewing someone who's not on TV, I don't ask for all the worst things about them. So what's your character flaw? So, so like, what's the worst thing that you're, like, your worst character trait you have? Oh, what makes you toxic? What thing you, no, we don't, we don't do that. We, we don't. And if you're doing that, stop it, guys. Okay, stop it. All right. Nobody wants to be around that kind of energy. And, you know what I'm saying? Right? So there's a time and a place for that kind of questioning that we have that. But, of course, you know. Um, I I get it. You know what I'm saying. Um, someone said they want to hear from the baby mothers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a good example of this. <laughs> a good example of this, right? Um, let me give an example of this situation. Um, let me give an example of this situation. So this happened with Tasia and Shiloh. Um, and I don't know if anyone clocked. Shiloh didn't end up answering the question. Now, I don't know if that's editing or whether that's actually generally she didn't end up answering the question. But that not answering the question was important. Let me just show you here. Uh, let's have a look. I want to get the clip up. Bye-bye. Where is it? Ready to love, ready to love, ready to love. Here we go. Okay, I want to get the clip with Shiloh and uh, thingy. Oh, have I not got it? No, it's oh, mate, I might have the. There we go, there we go. Sorry. Okay, so let's go. Shiloh and to see her. Okay. All right, cool. Let me show you something, guys. All right, so let's go to 940. The clip timestamp. Yeah, there we go. What it happened is. was Shiloh should have been to his left and I should have been to his right. It definitely wasn't indicative of how the relationship generally is. And I did not like that. So I guess we can start off with what. All right. So Debrina is about to ask a question, right? Debrina is about to answer a question. All right. And this is really important because the way you answer a question is absolutely important. Right. So the way that to see is about to answer the question and the way that Shiloh asked the question is really interesting because and this is Shiloh's again. This is Shiloh's energy. Right. Shiloh's energy is all about just being positive vibes. I'm just going to be honest with you. Who wants to be around Debbie Downers? Nobody does. Really? No one people like people like people who have good energy. There are some people that there are people that don't like any good energy, and that's fine. There are those people, but the majority of us want to be around people with good energy, good vibes, um, bring out the best uh, you know energy out of you, right? Okay. Um, uh, and someone said these are dates, even on dates, wherever you are, um, you know, you want you want to be able to uh you want to be able to bring that energy to the table, right? And on this occasion, to see her felt pressure, and I understand. Let's have the question. Oh my days! This thing wants to shang diggis, man. You are gonna play. Come on. Indicative of how the relationship generally is, and I did not like that. So I guess we can start off with what is your like deal breakers? I want to know what y'all like. Deal breakers. Deal breaker pet peeves. Someone who's not affectionate. All right, cool. So the first question really was, um, you know, the first question was about what are your deal breakers? And it's like to see it took a little bit of time to answer the question, right? She was like, what are your deal breakers? And she thought about it. Nothing wrong with that, right? Nothing wrong with that. 
because the question was about her and she had to take time to think about it. Nothing wrong with that. But then the ne- and remember, I keep telling you guys as well, how human beings think, okay, when things are in a short space of time, they start putting things together really, really, really quickly, right? So as soon as, uh, thank you, Debrina, as soon as Debrina asks that question, she's thinking, trying to get the thing, um, you know, uh, with the mindset, and then Shadow jumps in, right? Shadow obviously interrupts her answer. I get it. But the next question that comes is, what are your kind of like bad traits or whatever? And she jumps in there, right? And the moment she jumps in there, it creates this energy that, okay, if someone's if someone's looking at it, they're going to compare the two answers really, really quickly. If it's within a short space of time, someone's going to do comparative analysis. And we do this subconsciously, right? Um, it's, this is not a deep psychological thing. It is not something that you have to be an expert at doing it. We do this as human beings, right? We make comparisons really, really quickly to make judgments, right? So the, the you know, so t- to Cecilia was slow on this part. And then the next question, which is more about the, the bad traits of you, you are quick to answer it, right? That's going to speak in somebody's mind. Oh, so you're quick to tell you the bad parts, right? But when I'm asking for deal breakers, you slow on that part. Person's going to start judging you straight away. And they do it all the time as human beings because we're human, right? That's that's how we, we move, right? Um, so when she said about the traits about you, the negative traits about you, you know, if you see it, let's go. Let me see if I can get this clip up. You're talking about all these great things. You, so what's the bad traits? Like, what, what would somebody say about you that might be a negative trait? I could be a little like... Boom. Did you catch it? Right. It, it, as soon as the question is about what are your bad traits, you're fast to hit it. But the question about deal break is you're slow to it. Someone's going to compare that. Remember, the person is trying to make judgments easily from the beginning. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying she's bad. Again, I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to give you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to let you into the mind of when people are just thinking. They won't say it, but this is how their brain is just thinking. Right. The person is going to compare the two questions. Like, hold on a minute. You were slow. You were slower on uh, uh, on on the the deal breakers, but you were fast to tell me what your bad parts are. Yes, laughable, exactly. Defensive, almost like you're trying to get ahead. Almost trying to get ahead. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Whether I, maybe she was trying to get ahead of you know um, Shiloh, and maybe trying to make sure she didn't get ahead of her this time. But it also can kind of show as well that, like, like, like our life watch kind of said, is that you're defensive. You're trying to put all the bad things out there, similar to what Zadia is doing, trying to put all the bad things out there first. And it's like, so then I can get ahead. And, and so that I can uh, not show, so I can, because when someone puts all their bad things up front sometimes, it's like, so that everything's on the table. It is what it is. I don't want to get rejected. I don't, I don't need to find that. I don't need to come in closer and then reject me. I'd rather you know it up front and you reject me then, then cool. I don't get hurt. But some people can't take it. You know, some people don't want that to happen. Like the person get close and then they reject them. And I can understand, you know, and, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's, it's uh, the worst thing, but if you watch the way, um, if you listen to the way that she gave her answer, um, you know, uh, yeah, I, th- I think that too, Amber. I think that too, I think she did it to, 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 to get in there ahead of um, Shiloh. It's just a wrong question to get ahead of. And if you're strategic and calculating, Bebe, you should have thought about it because that is not the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you know, this it, it, it is what it is. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, and again, it's a learning curve. This is about learning. You know, certain things. Uh, um, you know, of course, her uh, original match is not there per like, se. Like uptight and maybe like not go with the flow as much. Like I'm a tourist. I'm a herb sign. I like. I'm a herb sign. Pr- okay, hold on. Let me. <laughs> That's so that. Let's just get the this flow as part much. Like, I'm a- I wanted to show you this part. If you watch the reaction of Phil, listen to what she says and then watch the reaction of Phil. And I'm going to get some people on. This is what I'm saying to you that, uh, you know, this is what I'm saying to you that people are making judgments all the time. You think it's innocent. Oh, I just said what I said. What you don't realize is people are making judgments about you every single time. You are watching me on the screen. You're making judgments. Right. And when you need to make fast judgments, quick judgments, you just take as much information as you can that you can make and determine and analyze. And that's why it's important that those, little, that's why these things like elevator pitches, they teach us how to do um, elevator pitches because you, you've got 60 seconds to make an impression. 
And that first impression is pretty much sold in the first six seconds. You know? Uh, let me see if I can get this uh, up again. Yeah. Let me see if I can get it up. You're talking about all these great things. You know, what's the best? All right, I'm going to get it up for you guys so you guys can see it. Uh, here we go. Okay. All right. What's I'm a tourist, reaction? I'm an herb sign. I like I'm a meal well. prep. I'm more of a like calculated, strategic person. <laughs> Got you. That's so that that's that. Boom. As soon as she said that, he reacted to it. Now, of course, I agree with everybody here. Phil was never choosing her in the first place. We we know, we know that he wasn't choosing her in the first place. But it doesn't make a difference whether you're being chosen or not chosen. These are things we can work on. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's things that you can work on because she was the exact same way with Phil, she's the exact same way with Frank, exact same way with the boys when she was told that she was at the bottom, the same energy. So we have to be able to let her know the way that you get when you riled up, when you feel some type of way, all right, it comes out, right? It comes out, right? This is, this is not the first time. See, if we leave it as just as the first time, then we can say, okay, but it's not the first time. It is the third or fourth time that she has chosen this energy to move with, right? When she feels attacked or when she feels hurt by something, her natural reaction is to come out with gloves off. And that in itself, people are going to see. Are you forgetting that Phil was in the room? Y'all have forgotten that Phil was in the room when, when, when she was saying that, um, which one of you voted for me? Phil was in the room, right? Phil was in the room. Phil was actually in the room at the time. So, um, you know, so, so I, 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 you know, these are things that people are going to be, um, people are going to be taking these calculations with, you know, um, you know, but yeah. And, and it's, yeah, exactly. Angel. I, I, I understood what she meant by calculated. I, I actually did understand what she meant by calculated. I just knew that straight away, as soon as you words use the words calculated and strategic, it's going to be a problem. Um, you know, uh, yeah, listen, I'm not against uh, your star sign situation. Um, you just got you just got to be why like hey, if that's if that's what you say makes your behavior first fine, but you got to work on it because if it's causing you issues, you got to work on it. Um, you know, uh it's it's it, someone says she's been honest again. Let let yeah. There is honesty, and there's some honesty that you have to, you have to be, okay, so let, let me just give this, right? I haven't done a review for it, but let me explain why I'm saying it's a problem. Strategic and calculated words either sound like somebody's cold or they're manipulative, right? If we talk about calculated or someone's, someone is, um, someone is, yeah, if someone's calculated or someone's strategic, it can sound like to other person that this person's either manipulative or cold. There is nothing coming out of that that's going to be positive. Yeah, there's nothing that comes out of that that's going to sound positive. You, you, you know what I mean, right? That, that being said too, especially when it comes, um, and this is it's unfortunate, but when it comes from a woman as well too, right? How men are looking for women, they don't look for women that's going to be strategic and calculated. Most men, are, most, I say most men, a lot of men are not. Are not looking for uh, for calculated and strategic. And unfortunately, it comes off, as, as so you put, I just said, it does come off masculine, right? Because that's what the masculine role, a masculine role, masculine energy is concerned with, being strategic, being calculated, executing, making this da-da-da. So when you hear that, right? I'm strategic and calculated. She's right. She is strategic and calculated. And that's probably why she's so good at business. That's probably why she's so good at business. But then when you're dealing with relationships, that now is going to be, you have to almost change the language, right? Maybe a better word would have been, I'm measured. Oh, I'm thoughtful in my process. You know, I think before I do things or I, I measure things, I weigh things up and then I make a decision. That is that is rounded language, right? That doesn't hold as much weight 
a strategic. Mm. Right? So not, not that I don't think she is manipulative. I don't think she necessarily is cold, but I'm saying about the fact that it's exactly love that word intentional. I'm intentional, right? These are good words that frame what you're saying that way. Cause sometimes saying it like that is going to come off in a particular way to the other person. So these are little, these are little minute things. She herself will know when you're doing business, language is important, right? You know, language is important so that it, it, it goes a different way. Um, you know, you know, so it, it can be it can be some way. So, you know, I, I think I think it's just another way of looking at it. All right. It's not that um, it's not that that it actually is that way, but it's it's how it's going to be received as a message to the other person. And that's why he put his drink down. Right, that's why he put his drink down. But let me let me get Seaway on. Seaway, let me get you on, baby. Let me get you on. Hey, Seaway, you good? Oh, baby, you're on mute, baby. Oh, I muted. Ooh, can you, you back the camera? Can I back the camera? Yeah. Is it too close to you? Okay, there you go. There we go. Why like, we close? <laughs> I hear you still. <laughs> what are you saying? Um, who are we talking about now? So we're just we're just having a quick conversation. Um, we're, just, we're just having a conversation about um, Tasia and uh, the Shiloh situation. Yeah, uh, Tasia just came off really, uh, you know, insecure in that situation. But I also think it could have been a little bit of editing. I don't like how they don't mm. let them know who's going to show up. I think they're doing yeah, that never on purpose. That. They're doing that on purpose to to throw people off. So uh, I thought it was interesting that that Tasia was like, oh, this is not representative of how the relationship is. And I'm like, oh, it may, maybe it is. Mm. <laughs> maybe it actually is, girl. I don't know if you know. But uh, mm. yeah, that was that was an interesting date. Um, if we're talking about the date, I really liked Phil's ex. I thought she was like really cute. She was really. She's a regular looking ex as well. Can't even lie. She was, she was really pretty. I'm trying to figure out why, why they didn't work out. What was going on with that? Ah, you know, sometimes your time and your season, baby. Well, Maybe he was, too, he was too young in the moments, you know what I mean? I don't know. I really liked her. She gave, like, a really, really good vibe. Um, yeah, her, her energy was correct. I can't lie to you. I like her energy. She's, she seemed like she was warm, um, inviting. You know, she seemed like she was, you know, a, a good communicator so far. So, I didn't have no, I didn't, I didn't have no problem with her. Do you know what I mean? It was just a situation with her and, and uh, it was just the fact that Shiloh obviously was doing what Shiloh does, you know. Um, commanding the room. Commanding the room. Yeah. Without it looking like she's hogging all the conversation. So do you, you know think that, it was editing that the way she got cut off? Like to see it no, being cut off? No, no, I don't think that was editing at all because, um, uh, because um, she actually mentions it later on um, to see her. Right. She said that she said that shallow cut her off. Yeah, I just yeah. think it's hard. It's hard to like in those dates. I feel like they're super super short. Yeah. Um, they're super short, so you kind of got to get in where you fit in. Uh, and then yeah, so if you don't if you don't try to get your statements or your questions out, then you're not you're not gonna um, get get what you need out of it. So they're mm. like eliminate. They, they look like, a, I don't know how long they're actually sitting there, but it looks really short. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure um, how long they were sitting there for, but, you know, Shiloh just is, you know, some people are better, some people are better at these kind of environments than others. This is this is that introvert, extrovert situation all over again. You know, this is, you know, I know people are saying it's not fair. But it's not fair when we have the show exit people in the first two first first day they run there in the mixer, because there are people that are introverted. But unfortunately, this is the game of the show, right? And I I'm gonna lie to you, it my, it reminded me, it reminded me of being um, on a group. It's like group, uh, you know, when you're in a group, um, uh, like a group uh, interview. Oh, like okay. I hate I hate group interviews. Like the panel interviews. Yeah, I hate the group interviews. Like, you know, when they put you in a group and that's how they're going to interview by watching you and observing you. I hate it. 
okay because it, it doesn't it doesn't suit my strengths yeah I feel like like companies like google and and all yeah. these like tech companies that's like the new thing they want to see if you're able to work in group settings so they, they yeah like that but yeah yeah and and and, and those, are, those are not for everybody i remember i remember went to um I went to a group editing, a group uh, interview, and you know, I, I I become more quieter. I don't talk more when there are more people talking. I hate it. Like I'm a person. If I'm in a group and the group is people have got very loud characters, I tend to try and compliment. So you're not going to see me trying to hustle and bustle, get louder. You might misread me and think, oh, he's being mad. Maybe he's not talkative or what. I just in a group, I just like to be chill. If there's too many talkers, I'm like, it doesn't make sense to add another voice. For right. me, so I can understand why to see her in that environment when there is another woman involved and the ex involved in front of Phil that she's not as strong as she likes to show. Do you know what I mean? I, um, I think if, if Phil was actually really feeling her, though, I think it all would have went differently. Even even with that, I think it was it was. I don't think she likes those type of settings, and Phil is clearly feeling Shiloh more, and I think that all came out in the date even though the ex on that day said that she liked them both the same which was interesting mm. but um yeah I, I don't think she likes the whole process but i think phil also he pays more attention to shiloh and it, it also adds to the to the discomfort of the situation yeah yeah I mean, like i said I, I do feel for her um in that setting you know what i mean in that setting i think the the abrasiveness how she talks that's got nothing to do with group settings that's her <laughs> right. That's that's her. But in terms of how she might have been feeling, um, nice shirt, like it. Um, in terms of how she might be feeling, in terms of the whole situation, yeah, I, I I do get it. It's not a, it's not a particular. Thing. And I have a feeling that Phil 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 is a nice guy, right? A good guy, so I should say, right? But I think he's, I think he, even at the end when he was telling her like why she had to go, right? I'm I'm asking myself, Phil, I. Yes, yeah, she's got. A, she's a particular taste. I I guarantee that. Um, do you like that, Phil? Because that's the one thing he didn't really say. He said she's an acquired taste. Your brother, do you like that though? And, and that's gonna, one thing I never heard. He wasn't say that he wasn't gonna really. He already did more than some of these dudes. He actually eliminated her himself. Yeah, I know. It's more than a lot of the dudes do. Like they completely punk out. Like when like Cornelius didn't eliminate. He didn't eliminate Courtney when yeah, he, he was the know. reason why she was going home, you yeah. know? So I feel like Phil th thought he was already doing better than, than most of the dudes because he actually took the time to let her know why he was, why she was going home. But he didn't mm. come to the, he didn't actually say, Hey, these are your personality traits, yeah. but I don't really like them though. Yeah. He didn't say that. And, and again, I think he was trying to spare her, but it, it did right. make me think about, in the past dating and whether someone's dated me and thought to himself <laughs> there's some traits i'm not liking about you right and mm -hmm. I've, I've dated some people in the past while too and i thought to myself there's some traits i don't like about you and i'm not i'm not trying to feel it and i'm wondering is there an obligation i know this is it's probably even a, a side question but is there an obligation then for us to have this conversation with people to help them improve do you know what i mean because a lot of people might not ever hear those true sentiments about some of the your characteristics are off. Do you know what I mean? Like obviously some things are, are personal, but there are other things that probably we do that are just like, yeah, but uh, no, 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 that's not gonna work. Do you know what I mean? I think if she asked. Mm, okay. Like, so like what, what, what could have I have improved on? I think that type mm. of unsolicited, unsolicited advice doesn't go over well, yeah. personally. Especially like you're already sending the person home and then now you want to tell them why, why, what they could do better in the dating pool. I mean, if you're like a very intro introspective person, like you like to grow, you like to get better then yeah, you would appreciate that. But if you're a defensive person, that would have went left. So you don't even know what type of person you're dealing with. So I would probably not say anything unless someone asked me mm. personally. But I also don't give unsolic unsolicited advice. I mean, I don't need like, one to us. Yeah, I, I'm really good at not giving my advice yes. unless you ask me. 
Yes, because I don't need the heat from you. So, <laughs> like, if you get offended, I don't need that. So, I'm not gonna yeah. say it unless I'm asked. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's just that's just me. If if you ask me, sure. I'm already a sag. I say things blunt, and I'm super misunderstood. So I try not. To, I try to watch what I say because people mm. are already gonna take it the wrong way. People take it wrong in the comments all the time. So I I really try to be particular. So I'm definitely not gonna give unsolicited advice unless they ask yeah oh uh, yeah i'm hearing you you know um yeah that makes a lot of sense do you know what i mean and it's, it's weird I, th I think i'm uh, you know it is weird but like it's a good question it's a good, good answer you gave there you know which maybe that's maybe that's something we should encourage in ourselves and other people um obviously you're out of the game so you're not included but maybe we should ask ourselves like you know if you're dating someone and it doesn't really work out what was the kind of, uh, you know, what was the, uh, what was the kind of problems that I had that, or what was the kind of things you saw that I can improve on, right? Because remember that again, questions are very important. So, what are the areas that you believe that I can improve on? Not necessarily what did I do bad, but what are the areas I can improve on? And that will actually make that question will allow the person to be able to say, okay, look, and not feel like it's a bad. Because if I say, what did I do wrong, and then you start listening, or it's gonna it's gonna be more trash. But rather, it should be a question of what are the things that you feel like I could have improved on? Then that person can be a bit more softer around, and you know what? Look, these are the certain areas I think you could have improved on here and here, da, 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 da. And then it just goes on from there. So it's a good, it's a good advice. Good advice. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Let me get Dr. Nundi. Dr. Nundi, hey. Hey, how's it going? Going cool. We're just talking about uh, Tasia, uh, Tasia's date with uh, Phil and... Um, with Phil and uh, Shiloh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Really, that was all. We was having a conversation, and sh and should should we be helping people when we're dating them? Should we be telling them, "Hey, you've got some functionalities and dysfunctionalities that need to be fixed up"? Um, so I I definitely heard what you all were saying in regards to uh, Phil and Tasia, and agreed. You know, if a person doesn't ask for you know, the advice or the input, then of course, you know, hold your tongue concerning it. But I do think that in general, we should want that type of feedback. It's kind of like, you know, if you was on a job interview, I know, of course, dating is a little more intricate, but just some of the similar principles. If you're going on a job interview, you do what you're supposed to do in the interview and they decide not to pick you, the, the way of the world is, hey, what were some reasons why I wasn't picked or is it something I could have done better? And you wait for that company or person to give you some type of feedback so you could be better in your next interview. So if we're just saying dating, collecting data, knowing information about that person, if that person didn't decide to choose you, it would be nice to kind of find out why. Because if you listen to Phil and to see his conversation, he said, well, you know, you're one of the real ones. And she said back, well, it look like real don't make the cut. Well, that could kind of be a little confusing because you think you being real and you being authentic, that is a way for you to stay on the show. But she was the one that was going home. But then if you also look previously in the episode, he made the comment about how her intensity isn't for, for everybody. He told that in the confessional, but he didn't really say that directly to her. So the only way she knew how he felt in regards to her intensity or what everybody else may have felt when they were at the table with Tommy would be after the cameras was rolling and she's able to go back and watch the episode. But for us in real life, we're not on TV, you know, so we don't have necessarily a camera to go back and look at or something recorded to go back and look at. So it would be some type of benefit if a person could be honest and nice and not rude and disrespectful, but to just say, hey, these are some things that we saw and you may could be better for somebody else later down the line. But of course, we gotta be also realistic that everybody don't function that way. So, you know, if somebody do give your honest opinion, you can't walk in the spirit of offense. You take it for what it is and you move on. Now, if they're being ugly and nasty and all those different things, then I probably wouldn't be going back and asking them for their opinion just move on from that situation. 
But I do feel like we can afford to get some type of evaluation or correction or some type of understanding so we can be better in the next dating, courting, relationship, or however you want to call it for the future so we can be better. Because the whole point is to be better. I know sometimes we walk with an idea of who we are and if a person tell us something anything other than that we can't receive it even if it's in a sense of uh, constructive criticism but if it's construction constructive criticism and it's done in the right way we should be able to take it and make make ourselves be better versus not doing anything at all so and all that was said he could have really told her a couple of things if she was willing to hear it but I don't know if she was willing to hear it or not. Is the thing. So, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. Do you know what? It's, um, you know, it, and, and do you know what? It made me think someone just said in the comment section, we actually have been here before to see her. We actually have given her feedback and it was good feedback. <laughs> and then she just threw it back in everybody's face. So maybe that was part of his mindset. Maybe that's why I feel they didn't want to give her feedback. Who knows? Um, Sean, what's your thoughts? <laughs> Sure. So I think just in, in in the same vein, I don't think she was open to the feedback. Um, she has been very defensive up up through this point. And I don't know if there's things that are taking place that we just don't see. But you know, even walking into the date uh, with, um, you know, with Phil and his ex, she was on guard immediately. Um, you know, she already started playing chess because she's like, oh, I don't like where I'm seated, where I'm sitting. You know, like, why is that the first thing you're you're, you're honing in on? Uh, so I just feel like she wasn't going to be open to the feedback, even um, when she did her like her last confessional. She said, I wouldn't change anything that I did differently. Um, you know, so for her, I don't, I'm not sure she's somebody that would would be like, oh, OK, this is what I see I could do differently. She just said, listen, the, the love that I have is out there for me. It wasn't on the show. And I wouldn't do anything differently. That shows me somebody that is not open to hearing how they could have navigated this process, navigated the process better. So she wasn't going to be somebody that was going to take some feedback. She would have immediately thrown her defenses up. She would have thrown it back at Phil and um, been upset. I hear that. I hear that. Uh, Jay, welcome to the conversation. We're talking about Tasia. I mean, we're talking about um, her... Um, I don't want to say performance, but how she was with the group date because it was it was you know I, again I do feel for to see her because on that group date, like I said, one you're caught unawares, you know, and not everyone performs very well in those kind of group settings. I still think there are certain things that she didn't have to do, but I you know I do do take some sympathy with the fact that she was in a group setting and a group date. You know what I mean? And not everyone's able to be the most outstanding of characters you know what i mean but um yeah jay what's your thoughts um hey everybody i'm just gonna take it back first uh so last week we had found out that she was the only one that was kind of like not aware that he was dating other people or whatnot so you know you have to take that in account on top of now i'm being surprised on a double date with somebody else. Mm. And so, you know, like you say, you have sympathy. I have sympathy for her on that part as well. But at the same time, Phil, on the other hand, has to remember when I, we first encountered this and she was at the bottom, she came in hot and heavy asking us why you put me at the bottom. So the tack with it all is like, I got a tippy toe around you because, you know, you can pop off at any moment. And you don't receive criticism back as welcoming as some other people might. So I have to calculate my own moves and my words to you to make you receive what I'm trying to say to you in a proper way and not make it seem like I'm just attacking you or bringing you down in some type of way or not, anything like that. So it was, it was like a little tricky situation with them overall even down to the point where he is sending her home. And I respect him for stepping up and saying, let me be the one to do it. But even in his wording and everything, he had to bring her up before he sat there and said, you know, this is what's happening though. 
this is this. And that's because she don't receive things well. So hopefully what I'm, I'm hoping is that she really looks back at this and, and don't necessarily change who she is, but tone down parts of her when it comes to dealing with the opposite sex. Because she wants to say that she deals in her feminine, but you're, you're, you're strong a lot of the times, just a, a little too much sometimes. And so she can reel it in at the right moments. I think she'll be very okay because she's a very, very beautiful woman. And she has some great qualities about her. And the straightforwardness is a good thing. She's going to find her catch out there. But she just has to reel it in just enough to still feel like a man should at the end of the day. You know, she don't want to be talking over him and talking him down because at the end of the day, men, and not to say nothing negative towards men, but they still have their ego and they work in that a lot stronger than women do. So, you know, you have to play to that just a little bit. And so she can tone it in just a little bit, reel it in just a little bit to see it be all right. She'll really be all right. And I think that's just with her problem being being so far. And as far as being surprised on a double date, yeah, it. Production is just like, again, with the shenanigans and stuff, like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? The whole table was surprised by it being a double date. So it's just, it's a hot mess. I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah, appreciate it, Jay. And I, I think this is, you know, this, this opens up a really good conversation anyway, in terms of us as individuals and how we do take in, you know, feedback back. You know, I thought it was amazing to I had a girlfriend and she told me some feedback. My reaction was not pretty, bro. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> wait till the feedback is by somebody you really do care about. And then you realize, but you're under pressure and the, and the reaction is different. You know what I mean? Um, and I think sometimes it's good to to have those moments because it does. And again, if you are a self-aware person, you will look at back at those moments and you will try to change the behavior. If you're not, it's going to continue. Um but, you know, once you have that experience of maybe, you know, someone giving you some some feedback that you really didn't like, you know, but, you know, their person had your best interest at heart. You know, you you almost have to kind of take it on board and 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 work with it. You know what I mean? And it's not every information someone tells you. I don't think it's every information that needs to be uh, taken in. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, I think it's more of a case of just trying to be able to. This is why this, you almost got to kind of discern. And it's difficult to do that, you know, if you don't have a good basis. Um, but it's kind of like discern um how you move you know saying how and what what's right for you so i think in this case yes to see her was blinded by the double date uh but i think we all knew that phil wasn't choosing as number one and i think uh number two um i believe to see her would have still given that same energy that she gave on a date in terms of the way she answers questions because we've seen it before so it's not necessarily anything kind of new. So this this date, double date, just further exposed her a little bit more, I think, than anybody else. Go for it, Sean. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I don't know if we talked about it. I might have missed it earlier in the conversation. But even when Phil's girlfriend, who is beautiful, by the way, I know we, we touched on that. Um, she asked her that question about what would her exes say about her? And she immediately refused to answer. Right. She was like, oh, I'm not getting into that with you. Um, you know, that to, that's just another sign of that defense, because if she really had done it to me, it's two things. Either she had never thought to do that because a lot of people don't necessarily go back to their exes and ask questions or care to even know or think what their exes have to say. Or two, it was something that she just doesn't want to talk about. Right. Because why, why would you not share that? Like what what's 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 the big deal? Um, if there was a learning there that something that you heard was like, okay, but this is the feedback I got. And then I took it in or somebody said X to me, but you know, for her to just dismiss it and say, I'm not answering that question, you know, on to the next, uh, that to me showed somebody that, you know, definitely still has their defenses up, definitely has some walls up and is, is not that open. Mm. Did that? Yep. Yeah. Go for it, uh, go for it, Jay. You want to say it? You want to add? Yeah, I was just saying, when you're not self-aware, um, basically, that's how you answer. 
you know, it's either I, I'm aware that my exes are not going to either have good things to say about me or I'm just not, you know, like you said, aware enough to even think about it. And when you are self-aware, you're going to automatically know the good and the bad parts of you that your exes will say. Because, you know, you'll be like, yeah, my exes will say, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a great home taker. I take care of home and everything real good, but I can get a little feisty at times. And so, you know, those are sound, those are sound um, responses that you will have to a question like that when you're self-aware. But when you're not, it's either I'm all positive things or all negative things or you don't have an answer at all. So I just think she's not self-aware because when you're always in defense mode, you don't realize that you're there anyway. So you can't be self-aware of yourself to even know that, you know, you're always coming off strong or always like you have a wall up or you're under attack all the time. So that's how I just look, kind of look at her sometimes that she's just not totally aware of how she presents herself to others. Good point, Sergey. Uh, speaking to the masses, you want to say? Oh yeah. Um, to add to it, because I'm just thinking about the different interactions that she did have. Because when she was on that one, the first date with Sean, we see like you know different responses with her on that date compared to some of the other dates that she went on. And I just kind of, I mean, maybe that's a question for her. Like, what was really the difference for her to? interact more with him compared to some of the other guys. But then it also makes me think about when she mentions mentioned like her, you know, Baptist background. I wonder if that is just something that's taught because I do know, you know, in certain religious circles or community, especially if you talk about the South and Southern ways and different things like that, you may have been taught by people older than you that certain things you don't discuss in public, whether you're on camera or whatever case may be, like you just don't discuss. So I wonder if some of that level of privacy that she doesn't want to talk about comes from that part as well. Because I mean, if you know people from the South, Deep South, you know, you may have heard about it in the streets, but you're not going to hear that person actually speak on it or talk about it. Like their business is their business. You're, you're not going to get no information whatsoever. So it just makes me think if some of those background raising and upbringing have something to do with it. Of course, on top of some of the other things that other people on the panel just have to also mention. But that was just some things that I was just thinking about concerning her, but also thinking about people in general and how we may be raised in regards to how we also carry ourselves. Okay, appreciate talking to my sister. Appreciate, yeah, um, yeah, I'm hearing that. Um, you know, again, it's it's not say to see as bad. Again, I I think you know, again, I think it's just it's just key. It's just little points, little pointers that maybe could help. You know, in the future, um, life boys put this. I saw someone else also put this kind of same message up that she did say that she <laughs> her exes that she did say, and this is <laughs> this is what I was saying about to see what she said about the feminine energy stuff. I was like. When she said that all her exes like just basically just loved her, like it would take her back in an instant. And I actually do believe I believe in the in the essence of probably because once they got to know her, they got past the shell and they got this maybe softer woman. Right. So in that sense, I don't disbelieve that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I don't I don't disbelieve that in that sense. Cause once you get past someone's shell. You know, you you sometimes sometimes get a completely different person to what you see on the outside, you know, and you see that care and that love and that appreciation that they have. Um, but now, now she's now in a dating scene. Um, we got to work on that outer shell. I was when I watched that scene um, as uh, Dr. Nundi was touching on, where she spoke about what in that little date scene where she said, "Oh, you know, I'm not going to talk about it." Da, da, da. I actually did a video about this with Alexia. She did the exact same thing in a date with a guy. You do that, you've you've cut you've you are literally, uh, you know, you have to learn how to say no tactfully, yeah, because what you don't want to do, what you don't want to do is embarrass the other person, right? And you don't want it to look like you're you're completely pressed. And in that moment, she basically blew up Debrina. Debrina is asking a simple question about, you know, 
uh, about about your past situations in terms of your, what would they say, whatever. You have to find a tactful way of being able to say it's probably not the appropriate time to talk about this, right? Um, and I know some people might be like, why do you have to do that for? You just got to keep it real. Well, keep it real all the time and see what happens to you. See if you keep it real at work all the time and see what happens. We can't keep it real all the time. Like life is life. Unfortunately, we deal with people and we have to be able to maneuver around those people. So there's a time and a season for where we deal with things. And that's what I'm saying to you in business. She probably kills it because in business, and especially when you're dealing with a masculine kind of energy in that environment, these things are not no problems. But when you're trying to foster certain relationships with people, you have to take into account the emotional aspect of people. Right. If I ask you a question about, oh, so like, what was it with your ex? And you go, well, I'm not talking about it right now. So I'm not dealing with it. I'm not about to ask you again. You know what I'm saying? So it, there's a way to say no by saying, listen, hey, look, you know, what? I, you know what? I would love to talk about that. But maybe a little bit, you know, maybe a bit of time. Maybe, maybe when we get to know each other, but I'm going to release that information to you. You know what I'm saying? Do a little cheeky energy kind of thing. And that person now knows, OK, cool. Like they said no, but they've 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 deflected in a very nice way, you know. Um, you know, so it, it's 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 the way you do it, and so just to clear it out, crap. I know someone else, someone else wants to add. My, my Colleen said, uh, I'm confused by Tasia being considered masculine. It's not necessarily that she's all the way masculine, it's the responses, the responses of God. Remember, I keep saying to you guys that masculine energy deals with protection, whether you're protecting others or you're protecting yourself, the way that comes out will come out as masculine energy. So if you're always protective. It comes out masculine. That's that's why we're kind of saying that. So again, I don't think she's bad. I just think she just needs someone to take a little bit more time to invest in her. But you may not get that chance again if you don't know how to be open in that moment. Um, sorry, who was going to add? Sorry, apologies. Who's going to add? Oh, you can open your mic if you want to add. Nobody was going to add. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so no one's going to add. All right. Cool. If no one's gonna add, we'll, we'll shit. Oh, you're gonna say that, CA, go for it. Oh, you weren't gonna say anything. Sean, were you gonna say something? No? Okay, cool. All right, cool. Um, let's talk a little bit then about um obviously I know she went home, but let's talk a little bit about uh Shiloh then, because Shiloh was obviously um on two dates with exes. She was on a dates with Phil uh and Dante. I don't know if she was with anybody else. I think that was it, Dante and Phil. Um, I, I was impressed. I'm not going to lie to you. Her energy was infectious. Her energy was warm. Um, she was positive vibes. And, you know, and she she kept it fresh and funky in uh, conversations with both the exes and, and, and the person in question. So I want to kind of get you guys perspective. Let's deal first maybe with Shallow across the – Shallow in uh, Phil's date because we're already there. What was your kind of thoughts around – around Shiloh. You can branch off, actually, to be honest. It wasn't that much happening that date. You can talk about both dates if you want to. Who wants to go first on that? Should I choose? Eeny, meeny, money, mo. Catch a tiger by its toe. Well, I don't mind going first. Um, Sh Shiloh with the date with Phil and Tasia. Um, yeah, there wasn't much there except for they had like just positive vibes. Seemed like she was vibing with the with the ex, with Phil, asking good questions. Um, yeah, that's all I have for for that date. But then Shiloh was on the date with Zadia and Dante, right? Oh, yes, yes, was, I don't think, yes. It was, it was a lot of dates, so I was trying to keep, um, keep, keep that whole thing straight. So it was just really, I guess this is more about Zadia than it is uh, about Shiloh, because when Shiloh walked in, Zadia's whole mood was just kaput, but we can, yeah. we can talk about that when we get to Zadia. Um, but she, she really came in there just asking like all the, you know, I guess positive questions. I think you guys were kind of talking about that earlier before we came on, just about how she was kind of asking more of the, you know, glass half full questions um, versus Zadia was asking the glass half empty questions. But um, yeah, the ex, the ex-girlfriend in, in, on that date really seemed to like Shiloh a lot better. But she just has just a very easygoing, easy spirit. Um, she's she's what a lot of men in today's society say they ask for: someone who's chill vibes, you know, not aggressive, easy energy. You know, that's Shiloh. So that's pretty much what I had. She seems to be everyone's star player. 
Mm. Mm. I'm why on that. is it even a conversation? But you know, what do you say? I why is like the deep conversation like why? Um, why 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 what that everyone likes her or why she is the way she is? No, why everyone likes her? Like why that vibe is you know is really working? I think I think there's a lot to that. Oh, Flo, we're listening. I just think you know men don't men don't want to be stressed. They mm. they want an easy you know easy vibe. They don't want to be intimidated. They don't want to be stressed. I feel like Shiloh in her line of business and her personality, she knows how to make a man comfortable. And I feel like that is what she's doing e- either in the background, like on these phone conversations, because according to Tyrone, you know, Shiloh's having lots of phone conversations, you know, with different people. I think she is making them feel very, very comfortable. Um, and I think, and she's, she's good at, you know, not overstepping her bounds. Um, and then I think she's also nice looking, you know, they like that. Um, so I think it's just a combination. She's like, she's like an easy person to vibe with versus, you know, Zadia, I guess in that same date, she doesn't have that same easygoing spirit. Mm. So it depends on what you want, but I think, I think a lot of men want that vibe. So. I hear that hundred. I hear that. Uh, Speaking to Masters, what's your thought on Shiloh then? Uh, both dates she was on with uh, Dante and Zadia and also with Phil and, and, and Tessia. What was your kind of thoughts around Shiloh and her, and her performance, if you want to call it that? So with uh, Shiloh's performance, you know, like Seaway was saying, concerning her profession and knowing how to communicate effectively, you can so, also see it. Dr. Nundi, your sound is uh, a little bit low and it Keeps going in and out. Can you hear me now? Uh, still low. Still low. Can you hear me now? Uh, still a bit low. I can hear you, but it's still a bit low. Well, try to go somewhere. Have there. you have you got earbuds in? Uh, no, I haven't had. No. Any. Uh, maybe try some headphones or something. See if that will just bring you up again because it's sound we can't really hear you. Chops in and out. Okay, whilst well, Doctor is getting that sorted. Sean, just say up. Sure. So um, I like the banter that she she had back and forth with, um, you know, with uh, Phil's ex um, when she was asking about any red flags for Phil. And, uh, you know, the, the ex started talking about the communication piece and him needing to be a little bit more communicative. Um, I think she is like a people person. And, you know, I know you mentioned earlier about her profession, so she may be able to quickly get in and, you know, know how to easily navigate conversations with different people, where some people, you know, they're a little bit more shy or reserved or, you know, if they're uncomfortable with the situation, they're not going to enter it into it, um, you know, with, with, with such ease. But, you know, I do think her profession and her personality has a lot to do with that. She seems like a people person, um, you know, her you know, her tone, the way she speaks, it's, it's, it's rather soft. Um, again, I don't know if it's an affectation or if that's really who she is, but it goes a long way um, when you are, you know, in, in, in those types of environments. It's very easy to talk to her. Um, you know, Phil opened up, um, what was his name? Tyrone, I'm sorry, opened up to her very early on in the process. Um, so she seems to be sensitive, kind of soothing, has that nurturing vibe to her. Uh, and I think that played well for her in these settings with both both of the different men um, that she went on those dates with. And, you know, obviously it, it worked out with the ladies, too, because she got positive reviews from both of the exes. So um, I think she's somebody just universally that is easy to get along with both men and women. Like that, like that. Is, is, is she the type, as Siwe asked question, is she the type that men look for in terms of the energy and if so why yeah and i and i and i saw that you know this always becomes a highly contested thing when we say as men we want peace obviously we're not saying women don't want peace um but uh we we look for those traits of calmness right if you how do you react in a tough situation uh and she is somebody that looks like 
she's not going to react, you know, very strongly. Somebody else put in the chat just now, low drama, right? You know, so you know that you want to see how the person acts in different spaces. How does somebody act around an ex? You know, all of us are grown at this point. We're in 30s. We, we're likely to be in spaces and be around each other's exes. Is the person confident enough to navigate that conversation or are they side-eyeing the person and it's now a competition? So I think that part of her shows that she can, she it does, she's not moved by it by seeing somebody else's ex or somebody else in another space, be it another woman that could be potentially a competition. Um, she's just, um, you know, hey, listen, I'm going to get what I need to get out of the situation and the conversation, and I'm going to keep it moving. And, 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 and I know for me, that is something that has made her even more attractive um, as we've watched the episodes, because she's somebody that's going to be an ease in a relationship, right? And, and I don't want to generalize, uh, but sometimes some of the options out there are not the same. And even if we look across the dating show that we're watching, not all the women are handling it in the same way. So her pro her way in the process makes you feel comfortable and secure. Like, all right, I can I can get along with her. If we have a disagreement, it's not going to go all the way left. Um, you know, she seems to be level headed. Kojo, if I could just say, the only thing I have an issue with the the way I'm not saying it's Shiloh's fault. And before people start in the comments, I'm not calling her Picnisha. But the issue I have with Shiloh or the production of Shiloh is that I feel like her whole energy has been all towards what the men need. I don't feel like we have gotten a chance to know Shiloh. And that doesn't mean that's Shiloh's fault. I just think the way it's been portrayed, we've got more color or nuance to Aisha or the different women on the show. We got a chance to know them better, their struggles, things about them. We haven't got a chance to know Shiloh in that way. All we know is how she relates to men on, in her dates, which seems to be very, very positive. But I think when, when it's always that way a lot, you're going to be missing something. I don't know what we're missing about her, but there's something to her that we haven't got a chance to know that may cause a problem later. Or she just could be perfect and she's going to find her match on this show. And But no one's perfect. And there's something to her that she struggles with something stuff in relationship. We just don't know. So I would actually, I wish that production would allow us to have some, a better, some, some, something else to understand Shiloh better because being a man's piece can't all, can't be who she is a hundred percent. She could be a man's piece, but there's something to her whole demeanor. And I wish we had a more, we had a bigger picture about, about Shiloh. And I don't know how many more episodes it's going to take for us to, to get that. We may never get that the way it's going. I just wanted to add that. Do you know what's really interesting that I was starting to see some of these comments. I find it interesting. Everybody on the show is single for a reason, right? Sometimes it's, sometimes it's just time is season, whatever, right? But when is someone that the, um, some women, let me put it this way. And I'm seeing some of the comments are like, so why should I single them? Why is that now the issue? Because we're praising her. It's not to say that she's better. It's not even to say, like, listen, the guys, why are they single? Why are they not why are they not married up? Right? They we we understand the reason why the people on the show are is because they're looking for a partner and maybe there's something not quite hundred percent right with them. But we're not saying Shadow's perfect. We described an aspect of her character or at least her movements that are endearing for us as men right it's funny because i'm only mentioning this because what happens is if we were to if if we were to start saying well why is she single then she shouldn't be saying it's like we then we start having we'll have we'll have war in the comments saying why are you saying women are single and da, da, da. but it's actually women cussing women i'm like why why are you cussing shallow because we're saying that she has a great energy listen no one's saying she's perfect it's funny enough to see her some people were saying for to see her she'll find someone who who's on her level but with Shiloh, no one, some people are not even saying that she'll find someone on the level. All they're saying is she's single. That's it. It's like, yo, guys, come on. Like, <laughs> I find it interesting. Like, I, and it's not every woman, by the way. It's not every woman. I'm just saying, I've seen some comments. I'm like, why would you, like, you know, we all, they're all single. <laughs> you know, you're, they're all single. There's a reason why all of them have a single. Um, 
you know, and I'm single. <laughs> I'm single, guys. Okay. <laughs> More than likely, I'm doing some things wrong. Do you know what I mean? Um, but no, no. No, but no. But, but you know, I, I think I, I think with, with Shiloh, you know, and I agree with Seaway's point here that the show has not shown any other seemingly not shown any other aspects, right? We all all we've seen is with Shiloh the the amazing great parts, right? So um we haven't been able to see those other sides. To be fair, I don't think we've seen other there's not a lot of people that we have seen the other sides of, right? I I I mean, you know, the I don't particularly think we've seen Aisha's bad side per se, apart from what we've seen in the previews, which hasn't come up yet. So up until then, that's the only time we've seen Aisha's kind of if you want to quote unquote say bad side, I don't think we've seen a bad side of Sydney. Um, we've seen a naive side of Mummin, but not really a bad side. Um, you know, I, I think with 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 Shiloh, I think I think some people have said it here. I think her sensuality definitely helps the men feel easy in this competitive state. I think, you know, it definitely helps. I don't know. Uh, obviously, Phil's attracted to her, so Phil's involved. He's seen something that he likes about her. Um, you know, I, I think for for Shiloh uh, and 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 you know maybe maybe she does maybe she does cater towards the men too much. Maybe I don't know. I can't really judge that at, at this point. I can't really I can't personally see that. I think for her, I think she's one of those people. Um, so, so what's wrong with you? I know, I know. Um, I think Shiloh's one of those people that. You know, Sean, we've been saying this for the past few weeks. You know, we've been, we're making jokes about this about um, INFJs. When you meet an INFJ. You're winning. I'm, I'm sorry. Listen, everybody else is great. Listen, you lot are great. You're amazing women. You're you brilliant. But when you meet an INFJ, you're winning. I'm just going to be honest. You get the you get the the calmness, the peace. You get a little bit of a challenge, but you get the, the person that wants to support you, encourage you, love you. Listen, you get an INFJ, you're winning. I'm just going to be honest with you. Personally, from what I can see, that's probably, that's probably that's my type, the INFJ would match. You know what I'm saying? But they've got some great qualities, INFJs. Uh, um you know, uh, someone sent into me I and a fee. They're all fighting for their position now. They said, ah, I can teach you. Um, but no, no, uh, jokes aside, but you know, I think some people just ha- not, from what we can see from the outside, they have a soothing energy. Do you know what I mean? And it's good to be around them, you know. Um, but again, it doesn't guarantee, like you guys are saying, it does not guarantee, like you said, Seaway, it doesn't guarantee that, that someone's going to wife you or marry you or marry as a husband, whatever, you know, because maybe there's other qualities that not necessarily matching up. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely hearing those points there as well. You know, definitely hearing those points as well. Um, Jay, you, you haven't, you want to say about, um, uh, about our, our sister, um, Shallow, Shilo, Shallow. Yeah, I, I let me first address a few points that was said. Um, why she's single? There's a couple of reasons why people can be single. This reason, um, one is we haven't found the match. If I have a cool, calm demeanor, a lot of times I'm not trying to go against somebody that's hot tempered or or like you know up fiery and stuff like that. I want my match. I want a cool, calm demeanor. So automatically that disqualifies me from a lot of people that I might come across. You know, I might. I, when I was single, it was because of choice. It wasn't because there just wasn't people out there. I just didn't want to settle for what the options that I had at the time. So there's a number of reasons why she is single. And a lot of them reasons can be by choice. So it's not just because we given her great compliments and all that is something automatically has to be wrong with her. You know what I'm saying? Um, then to address kind of like what Seaway was saying, I do feel like production is leaving out a lot of the stories. But on the other hand, when we see these interactions, it's Shiloh asking the questions. So we get more of other people's uh, perspectives and opinions of themselves than we get more of Shiloh. They're not really necessarily asking Shiloh these type of questions that she asks them. She's doing the work to get inside of what they got going on to see if they're right fit for her. But they might not be doing that same work back. So we don't see it all. And production could be leaving it on the floor because we don't see a lot of Aisha, like you said, Kojo. And then we don't see a lot of other people. Hell, we didn't see Phil for like almost three, four episodes. And then all of a sudden he has like six connections with everybody. Like, you know, so it's, it's a lot we're missing, but she is a talker. And, and that's a, 
a beautiful thing when you're trying to make a connection with somebody because you're communicating and for you, you're going to keep asking certain questions to know if they're a fit for you. Now, if they don't ask those questions back, that's kind of like on them. So, you know, that's one thing there. Um, I do like the fact on the dates that she was asking certain questions to really find out about the person and how they fit into her life and that she is calm and laid back on the date, even if there is somebody else there with her, that she, it shows an unbotheredness, which is also an extra confidence to the man. Like, you know what? I can bring you around my ex. I can bring you around friends. I can bring you around coworkers and you're not going to sit here and pressure me, at least in public. And most men like that. You know, I don't care if you want to be a pick or not. If you want a man, you need to understand that's what men like. They don't want to be hassled and heckled in front of their peers and co-workers and friends and family. You know, that's something that y'all could probably work out in private, private. But to make a scene everywhere you go to say, you know, I'm not going to even say Camille because she kind of pulled him to the side when she did it. But still, you know, even then, it's just like chill. You know what I'm saying? Have some confidence about you a little bit and stuff and know that you secure when I'm with you, when you're with me, that you're my one. And it does make a man feel like, you know what? I do want to rock with her. Because I can take her places and not have a problem everywhere I go. So if that makes her a pick Misha or whatever it is the case, guess what? She's going to have a man. She's going to have a ring. She's going to have kids and a baby later on. So, you know, all that little name calling of the pick me and all that stuff, y'all need to calm that down if that, your end goal is to have a man. Because you got to have a little bit of it. It's a balance in everything that you do in life. So you have to have a little bit of thug in you. You got to have a little bit of pick me up in you. You know, so I'm not mad at her. But the thing is, she comes from a healed, a seemingly healed place when she asks the questions, too. You don't see, sit here and ask. She's not asking negative questions like the girl, the ex-girlfriend said. She's not coming from the negative aspect. She's always coming from the positive on what he's going to bring to the table to make me better. What can I bring to the table to make him better? And that's the wonderful thing about her questioning, too, that she's not sitting here just, uh, well, what negative did he bring? Why he why the end relationship end? what he do? Well, 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 that's a turn off. Because your mindset is always in the negative. You're always thinking something's about to go wrong. So sometimes you got to rethink the way you, you know, approach things when you come into people and, and listen to the way you, you carry on with your conversations. Because if you always in a negative, that's automatically going to turn people off on you. So that's why her connections are strong with Dante. That's why her connection is strong with Phil. And that's why her connections are strong with anybody else that she's going to approach but she's going to be single until she finds the one who connects with her that same way. And so that's all I got to say on it. Chef J cooking up. I hear you. Chef J cooking up. Dr. Nundi, is, how's your sound going now? Are we, are we back in the business? Can you hear me? We can hear you. You're a bit low. Let's see. Let's try it. Let's see how it happens. Okay, let's see if it works. If not, then I'll just jump in the chat. <laughs> But um, in regards to Shiloh, I the one thing that really stood out to me the most was Dante's comment in regards to Shiloh digging for gold versus Zadia digging for dirt. That was really profound in itself. And it shows that the type of questioning that Shiloh has and how she went about getting the information that she thought that she needed of course it was strategic but she knows how to communicate she knows how to communicate um you know of course she's an intimacy coach so she knows how to ask certain questions to get the answers that she's looking for and to add to that i also think that it's shot not just her approach but you can tell when, whether it's verbal or nonverbal, if a woman is desperate, um, if she's have anxiety, um, and not just for women, women and men. You can just 
some people can discern, you know, if you're operating in anxiety, if you're operating in desperation, if you feel like your clock is ticking, those things. So when you come to the table on these dates, a man can possibly pick up like certain things that you're presenting with shallow. She come, she comes at the table, calm, cool, calm, collective. You know, she knows that she's going on dates with more than one guy. She's not stressing the situation. Um, whoever is for her is for her. She's not doing the pick me's, you know, putting all her eggs in one basket. And she's being very level headed about it versus some people may come off desperate and they're doing ex being extra doing going to the extreme. And that can be off putting to a lot of guys. If you coming in here acting like some of the other women have been acting, it put guys in a different position. You know, some guys don't feel the need to speak up as they should. Um, they just put guys in uncomfortable situations. So you want to be able to be that 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 lady, that woman that is a peace. You bring peace into an environment. Um, you come as a safe place, safe space. You know, you're not coming, arguing and fussing, complaining, gossiping, pick, picking, nitpicking, all this negative traits. Because men don't like it, but let's be real. Who who would like that, really? You know, is that what you really want to be around your family, your friends, or just strangers? I mean, let's be honest. We don't like that type of stuff. So in the case of Shiloh, she knows how to come into an environment, be peace in an environment, be cool, calm, collective in an environment, and just enjoy the date for what it is. She doesn't get flustered or frustrated if, from what we see if a guy don't pick her or whatever, she just goes with it. And I think it makes a difference where you're uptight and, you know, got an attitude versus you taking it for what it is. It's a life experience. I ask my questions. You ask your questions. We both be mature about it and we see where it goes from there. And I, and it makes a difference. So I think that's the difference that we're seeing on the show in regards to how she's moving now. In regards to pr production, I have several questions concerning that. If productions is behind it, in regards to the narrative of her intimacy coach uh, narrative, but beyond that point, just her demeanor and how she carries herself and how she's relaxed in her environment versus being uptight, it really makes a difference. And a guy will notice that and, and evaluate if he wants that as a part of his life versus if he did. So. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nidhi. Good read there. I like that. I like that. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, Corey Blake. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, my God. Sir, please warn us before you uh, do that again, all right? <laughs> what's going on what's so, going so, what was your question i'm sorry i missed the question no worries uh we're talking about shadow um we're talking about, um you know uh what, what your thoughts were of her on the dates um you know because uh, she got quite good reviews from the exes at least you know wanted to get your kind of views on 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 shallow and and you know her particular interactions today yeah um i think shallow was very even kill i, I love what she answered questions um, what really impressed me about how she answered the question was the interaction she w when she was with um, when Tasia was sitting next to her. I can't remember who she was talking to. Was it on uh, Tyrone? I think it was Tyrone. No, not Tyrone. It was Phil. So on the double day with Phil, the ex girlfriend asked a question about. I think it was like, "What are your red flags?" or something like that. And while she was thinking about what her red flags was, Shiloh already answered. And that tells me that Shiloh knows herself. So I like the fact that that she shows that, you know, um, she's showing me a little bit of something more than just I can make my booty clap or I can talk sexually to you. Uh, that, that's that's a little bit different, you know, um, and I'll take it piece by piece. I don't expect to know her whole life story uh, because she has to share the stage with everybody else. But I need to see, like I said, I need to see different layers of her before I can make like a my own judgment call, but 
Uh, to me, this was a, a little bit of light in today. At least I know she can hold an intelligent conversation, which is important. A lot of, some women can't do it. Um, but to that, to me, that's something that really stood out to me about Shiloh and all her dates. She conducted herself with class, uh, in my opinion. Um, but again, I didn't get a whole lot from her, but I did get a little more knowing that she knows herself and know that she can hold a decent conversation. So that's what I took from her. Cool, cool. Uh, and we'll ask a question, you know, ask a question around after that as well. Um, if you believe it's to be so, um, do you think her personality, her personality or the energy that she puts out, is it something that men like? Is it something that men usually gravitate towards in terms of her energy? I would say, yeah. Um, the reason why I say yes is because uh, I paid attention to Shiloh, Shiloh in previous episodes, um, especially the one when Zadia was cutting it up in a women's lounge. She seems to be kind of even killed to me. You know, she does. She's now with the rah-rah. And there's something about that I find attractive about a woman, a woman who can, you know, still be even killed. She don't have to show the ratchet all the time. You know, just because someone's around you is being ratchet. Don't mean you have to bring it out, you know. So to me, I like that about her. Um, yeah, I just, for me, I, I think Shiloh just she just has a little bit more to give. I don't really have a lot for her, um, but I think she has a little bit more to give than what she's been given. Love that point. Just as just to add to the point about what Siwa has said, that it's quite interesting, and it, I don't know if it is the edit as well because. In that scene with Phil and Tasia, the um by the way, Corey, so I didn't I didn't jump in because I knew he was talking. The question that she actually answered first that she actually answered was, What are your um deal breakers? That's the question she answered. When it got to red flags, she didn't actually answer that question. And I'm wondering it because Tasia was answering, so I'm wondering whether edit whether production edited it so that she didn't get a chance to answer, or whether she actually flipped the script and didn't answer. Because her next thing that came out of her mouth was a question. She actually asked a question um, about Phil. What do we need to know about Phil, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe that's why we might not have had much about what Shallow is. Because maybe maybe also, too, she doesn't allow for, uh, uh, you know, maybe, 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 and I'm saying maybe. It's not that it has to be maybe. Maybe she doesn't also be as open to fully getting to know her as much. So she makes you feel comfortable. But you, but you don't get all the, you don't get the same uh, uh, revealment or depth from her back towards you. I'm not saying necessarily it has to be that case, but it could be consideration. Uh, yeah, it's a could be. Um, I, I definitely think it's a could be. But I like to flip the other side of that coin too and say it could mm. be that she is the type of woman who's like more of a one on one, without the mm. cameras, without this, without that, because her life may be intimate to her. So I got to mm. respect that aspect coming from that aspect as well. It seems to me also that, that Shiloh is not the type that you will get into arguments with her every day or every other day. And that's something that men really need. We don't really like to argue. Um, and she seems very peaceful with that. I haven't heard her like turn up at, at all during the show. Um, she got emotional when Tyrone was eliminated. She's an emotional person. I can tell that she's cried a few times on the show. Mm. But um, as far as like having a problem with someone, she's never voiced that either. And she may very well have a problem with someone on the show, but she's never said, I don't like this person. This person here is, you know, they're not right for me. They shouldn't even be on the show. I don't get that vibe from her. So that's what makes her seem to be very easy going to me. And it's an attractive trait. Yeah. That's it. I like that. Okay, cool. Let's move on. All right. So uh, let's... Uh, <laughs> Let's 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 talk about another character on the show. Uh, we had Zadia. Um, she had a situation. Oh wait, do I do I, do I, do I guys ask you about Zadia? Do I ask you something about Zadia? I can't remember if I did. No, I about to see her first. Okay, cool. I don't want to be missing out anybody who's on last week. I did. Um, so about Zadia. Uh, Zadia obviously had two dates as well. She had Naeem and she also had with Dante. Um, and it was quite an interesting affair with 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 Zadia. Um. Uh, I don't want to get you guys' perspective. Sean, you sat up, so let me go to you, bro. What are you saying? Zadia, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I think Zadia is is another one that, uh, you know, given off defensive vibes this, um, you know, 
this these last couple of uh, episodes, you know, her the whole thing, <laughs> and I, I can't hear her name <laughs> right now without hear you saying Zadia. <laughs> <laughs> It just makes me crack up. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think she's super defensive. I don't know what it is. I don't know if she doesn't like being in competition. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if she feels like she doesn't know where she fits in. Um, but even with Naeem, um, that group date, um, she wasn't given the best impression. She seemed to be disinterested, you know, from whether it was her body language or the way she answered the questions, um, you know. So I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I don't know if there's something else happening behind the scenes that we're missing. Um, but she is definitely not feeling this situation right now. So more to come with her. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, I hear you on that. I hear you on that. Uh, speaking to the masses, what's your thought on Zadia? You know, I mean, uh, she had a quite an interesting date with. Uh, you know, Dante and with also um, Naeem, you know, the ex of Naeem also was quite, you know, <clears throat> on job asking questions. So what was your kind of thoughts around that? Um, so I was thinking about something she said in the past when she was speaking with Tyrone and the fact that she said that she was clatchet, uh, classy and ratchet. So I wonder if what she said in the beginning, is this what we're seeing? Because she said it herself, that's what she goes by. So I wonder this portion of these episodes and that other facet of her, is this what we're actually seeing? Um, it would be nice to not see her, you know, feel like she has competition and all these other things. And I understand it's a dating show. I get it. But, you know, kind of like what Moomin said, I'm just going to sit on my throne and and just, you know, kind of wait it out type of deal. It would be nice if Zadie kind of did the same. You know, you don't have to get flustered. You know that the rules of the show, they're going to do certain things. Hold your composure. Ask your questions and let it ride out and you make your decision, by, you know, off camera. But we are seeing, you know, different things from her that some of the guys may not like. But the one thing that I had a, I guess I had a question for when the fellas was at the delivering table and um, really Frank said it. And it made me wonder, did Frank know Naeem or Zadia the way he said it? Because he said he was like, you know, with Naeem, he's not really seeing the big picture concerning Zadia and that she could be taking advantage of Naeem. But then it also made me think about the conversation with the ladies from the previous episode. And we were all trying to figure out, well, what is the issue with Zadia? Because a lot of ladies was like, you always trying to make go to 10, uh, 100. You always taking it there. So is it something that we're really missing that production has not shown us concerning her? Because it seems like it's always an attitude or an argument or something that's going on that we don't really have the full picture for. So when we see the her going on these dates, it just makes it seem like, you know, she's competitive now a lot a lot more aggressive than before and i don't you know the guys are not really responding to it and i don't know how that's going to be for her for the rest of this show i'm just really hoping it doesn't get any worse than that but we did see some clips for next week so of course we have to wait and see but you know the digging for dirt as dante said and if you're going in with a negative perspective, and I get it, you know, you want to see the flaws of that person as well as the positivity to see what you're getting yourself into. I definitely get it. But I don't know if Zadia went about it the complete and correct way concerning the show. So I'm just going to have to wait the next week to really give it a full analysis concerning it. But I don't think the guys are liking it too much. It's all I can really say. 
Thank you for that, Dr. Nundi. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, the guy. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, the, the guys on the show seem to have seen something. I don't know. I mean, I know we've seen one or two things, but not enough. I don't know. They've, they've obviously seen something because they're trying to tell Naeem that he's not, he's missing stuff. And I don't know what they've seen. So clearly there must be something, there must be stuff that's happening behind the scene that is bigger than what we're seeing on the screen because the fellas themselves are saying, Naeem, you're missing stuff. That, that, that for me is, a telltale sign that something else is going on behind the scene that we're not actually seeing. So, um, yeah. Okay. Seaway, what's your thoughts? Uh, yeah. So my thoughts are, let me just say, I feel like I say stuff and then, you know, they do interviews when they're eliminated and we get all this beautiful color and nuance that we never had. So <laughs> let me just take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt. Cause I'm sure in about a couple weeks, she'll do an interview and everyone will love her. Okay. But as of right now, her her energy is, you know, it's it's just it's very negative and miserable and dark and just frustrating, I think, to watch. She just she's been miserable to the to her women castmates and she seems kind of, you know, negative even on her dates. But with the date with Naeem and, and Zadia, um, that date went better for Zadia. Uh, maybe because it was just her. Or, you know, maybe that was the, the, the biggest change. She seemed more comfortable. That was a better date. Um, on that date, um, the ex Victoria, because I don't know if we're going to get a chance to talk about the exes, so I'll just talk about it as we talk about Zadia. But um, she, she seemed to ask Victoria pretty good questions. Uh, she didn't seem intimidated by Victoria. She seemed like she was really trying to get the, the scoop and everything that she can get out of that date. Um, and when she was asking about the red, she seems very concerned about the red flags. And when Victoria told her that, you know, that he doesn't like to cuddle, um, she seemed, you know, pretty concerned about that. She likes to get down to the bottom of, you know, what, what she can expect, which is not a bad thing in and of itself. I like to get down to the bottom of, you know, like I'm a rip the bandaid type, you know, person type person. So I understand that, but she does seem to lead with trying to figure out what the red flags are before anything else. Um, but Naeem, but Naeem seems to be all in with Zadia. Um, and I thought it was very telling that when Naeem asked his ex what he thought about Zadia, the ex who didn't know her from, from, from Adam, from a can of hate said that he thought that she would have difficulty um, being there for him. And that is something that stood out to me about Zadia this whole season. She seems, just very cold standoffish um, and that she's kind of the opposite of Shiloh. I think that if, if Naeem had an emotional response or needed some emotional, any type of support, I feel like Zadia would just be staring at him. She just gives me the vibe that she doesn't know how to kind of be that nurturer. Um, again, I could be wrong, but that's, that's how she, she comes across. She's completely cold and emotionally unavailable. I do want to note that Victoria seems to really still be into Naeem. I don't know why they broke up. It must be recent, but if she can get him back, it looks like she would want to get him back. Um, and yeah, Zadi on the Dante date, we've already kind of talked about that. So, uh, but yeah, she seems, I think her and, her and Naeem probably are a better fit. But I think Naeem, Naeem seems to have his own issues. So I, I I don't really know, but yeah. That's what I got. I hear you on that. I hear you on that. Yeah, and obviously the conversation that she had with Na Naeem, it did seem to go a bit better. Um, I think she was a bit more relaxed in that conversation as well. She wasn't being pressured with another party being involved. Um, yeah, the ex did seem a bit invested in that conversation. I won't lie to you. So, yeah. Uh, Corey, what's your thoughts on Zadia? Thank Zadio? you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So when it comes to Zadia, Zadia is the perfect example of a man who can look at a woman, find her attractive, but won't touch her with a 10 foot pole. I can look at Zadia and say, wow, nice smile, nice body, but I wouldn't touch it. And the reason why is because of what Seaway just said, and I agree with her 100%. Zaya doesn't like she knows how to be there or want or is willing to be there for her man. 
Um, she's already said that she's spoiled. So it's really all about her. I get the vibe from Rosalia that um, her doing something for her man is just her being his woman. That's the vibe I get. That's enough for her to, to do. Now, that was an interaction that she had uh, on the first date, but she had competition. So I agree with Sewell as well. With Naeem, she was more laid back because there was no competition there. She's by herself. She's fine with that. But she still had those negative type of questions, though. She still was was going into this, you know, tell me something about Naeem that I need to know that, that blah, blah, blah. Um, she takes to the she takes the heat off of her and puts it onto the other person. So to me, I think that Zadi is just really, truly not ready to love. But fortunate and unfortunately, there are men that are out there who will date Azadia, who will marry Azadia, because all they want is someone who's beautiful on their arm, and that's it for them. So there's somebody out there for her. I don't know if it's on the show or not, but I can guarantee you that somebody will pick Azadia and be good with that. But for me, I'm good. <clears throat> Don't let Zadia watch this part of the show. Uh, Jay, go for it. <laughs> you a mess. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to keep my, all my thoughts together because um, it's a lot. I agree with Corey and Seaway about a lot about Zadia, but from my perspective, I look at it like Zadia is very beautiful. She got body, yaddy, yaddy. And she she's spoiled that means that she's never had to compete with other women me and my friends were out today and we were just joking around about how does it feel being the hottest one in your group of friends and that's what Zadia gives me that she is out of her friend group pretty much the hottest one so that means she's never had to compete with other women for the choice of the men you know they automatically is going to say chocolate Nice body, beautiful smile, gorgeous eyes. How you doing? In this setting, though, it's different because now I'm forced to compete with other hot chicks of different flavors. And so now when the men are not choosing, and, and we've seen that with Cornelius because she had a little defense up about the fact that Cornelius is not automatically putting his foot down either Camille or whoever else he's talking to. And the men are not stepping up because they're trying to play the game too. You know, they don't want to get voted up by automatically just choosing you right off the bat or whatnot. So they're still playing their hand and, and keeping their options open. And it's not a definite with anybody. So she doesn't have a definite. And like I said on your review, she comes across as a little bit of a control freak. And her not having a definite means that I don't have control of the situation to be able to navigate the way I would normally navigate this. With Naeem, she has that bit of control. When I'm now Naeem and just his ex, and this is coming from a place of my cockiness that I would be like if I was her, is I don't see a competition with the ex. You're the ex. So I can ask you anything under the sun and it's not going to matter really much or whatever, just long as it gets to what I need to know about this man. But when I'm competing against the next potential, that's a different story. I might, you know, go back into a shell or whatnot and not play my normal role because now I'm out of control. Because if I feel like he might be feeling you a little bit more than me, I have to try to come out of character one up you and if I don't have much character because I don't have to usually do anything extra it makes it a little bit harder for me to maneuver and that's what I get from Zadia that right now she, her back is against the wall because she's in a place where most of the men is not giving her a definite that you're my one you're my top you're my you know this that and the third and I'm still unsure about who it is that I want on my list not list that I do have so it's, you know, up in the air with everything because I don't have a definite and I'm not in control. So I'm slipping by the seams as she continues to go down. That's why she's firing out of control with the women. That's why she's firing off questions just on the negative side of everything instead of trying to actually figure out 
what positives these men might have to bring to your table. You know, and that's the thing when you're going against Shiloh and stuff, Shiloh's always on her positive side, even if she might ask, what is the red flags with that person? That's not necessarily a negative question. That's I need to know just in case I see them. Let me help me recognize. But if I'm always asking, well, why did y'all break up? Well, what did he do wrong? Well, how is he like, you know, what's his deal breakers, this, this. And it's always a series of negative questions instead of a balanced questioning situation. Then it's going to come off to the other party as something wrong. And so that's why Dante's ex picked up on it. Like, yeah, you know, she's on a negative aspect of everything opposed to his ex-girlfriend picking up on it. Cause like C way say, I think the ex got a little something for him still. It sounds like they broke up on the bad terms or whatnot. Cause he was too busy checking out booties. Cause that's all she was focused on as Zadia's booty. And so was he. So I'm not mad, you know, but when you get into it, that's, that's what I get from Zadia is that right now, her unsurety is that she doesn't have the control that she's used to. She's out of her, her uh, field of playing and, you know, nobody's securing her or locking her in. And it's just kind of frustrating her as a whole. And it's viewing out through everything that she does. Cause she walks in with the attitude. She sits down, she starts engaging with an attitude. And the only reason that she didn't do it so much with the ex is because like I said, that's the ex. I'm not worried about you. So that's what I get from Zadia. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I hear that still. I hear that still. Yeah. I mean, I think with Zadia, I, you know, I just, I think she's on the, I think she's on the defensive. I think she's almost ready for someone to move mad. And it's almost, I think that's what's coming through, you know, that she's already ready for something to kind of go wrong. So she's trying to get ahead of things almost. Do you know what I mean? Um, Again, I don't think she's the worst candidate. I just think that she just, just the way she executes, <laughs> um, it, it's not, it's not, it's not warm at all. Do you know what I mean? And like I said, I think Zadia is beautiful. Well, let me not even use beautiful because beautiful seems like a very generous word when everyone says it. It's like, hey, you're beautiful, and you, you don't really mean it. She's a very attractive woman. I find her very attractive. I, I said the same thing as Corey. She is beautiful from tip to top to bottom from head to toe the girl's one fine sister but the attitudes i'm gonna walk away <laughs> i'm gonna walk away uh, uh okay if we're talking about a man wants peace that's what we're talking about that's not peace you know that that that's gonna that right there is gonna cause me war you know what i mean that that's gonna cause me war you know um so it's not it's not to say that again I have to keep putting this disclaimer here that she's the worst person ever. It's more cases. There's little tweaks that can be done that, you know, uh, you know, that we, that we can, you know, that we can help with here. And actually she, it becomes this amazing person because she honestly is fine. So I don't even, uh, part, part of me is like, I don't even blame the brother for ignoring the, uh, the rest the red flags. He say he going to get in, he going to get some craziness. He going to get out. Right. The problem is that you might get stuck. OK. And you might be an empty pocket before you finish. Uh, but real spit, you know, I, I think just a little few tweaks here and there. Um, and, and, and she, you know, she becomes an amazing candidate. Do you know what I mean? At this point, because, again, if there's parts of us that if we don't fix, you just lower the amount of people that want to be with you. So it's not that people won't want to be with you. There's someone's going to someone's going to overlook it. Someone's going to overlook it probably more than likely. But. You just narrow the amount of people that want to to engage with you when you don't change. It's just those little tweaks there. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I, I mean, hopefully, you know, she can she can hear this and not hear it, not hear us necessarily bashing her, but more just trying to give us some quick critiques to to help her. We want to know why the energy is the way it is. Do you know what I'm saying? Why why have we got this attitude that seems to keep coming through? You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. I don't know. Hopefully we'll see what I want and she'll be able to change that. Uh, okay, cool. Um, then there was uh, obviously uh, another person. There was Sid Sydney. Mum, no, let me do Sabrina and Walter. Uh, Sabrina and Walter. Um, Sabri Sorry, Sabrina's left early. So it's Sabrina, Walter, and then Sabrina and the Frank conversation. But Sabrina and Walter, 
Uh, what's you guys felt? <laughs> Sabrina and Walter and his ex. I was so confused by the ex. Uh, the, but it, it may, do you know what it is? It's just the nails. The nails are throwing it all off. You know, the nails are throwing it all off. Uh, but what was you guys thought? Sabrina and Walter, what was you guys kind of thoughts on, on, on those two then? What was you guys thoughts on that? You going, Sean? Go for it if you want. Yeah, I'll go, and I'm going to just tread lightly. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the, the ex, she, I don't I don't know, bro. It just seemed like they didn't seem to match. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it was something a little off. I mean, she definitely was able to communicate and talk a little bit about their relationship, but it just seemed, it seemed to be a, a mismatch, whereas, you know, Walter – seems to be this brother that's put together and well and she just seemed to be a little bit on you know the other side of the fence but you know seemed like a sweet lady uh but i, I again sabrina and you know i just want to kind of take it lightly because i realize we're watching an edited tv show but her defenses seem to be up too and i think she's another one that's like over the um, group dates. She didn't want to engage in any dialogue. She shut down the dialogue um, between the ex um, and and her. And she said, like, I don't have any questions for her. Um, you know, anything that I feel like I can a- that can be answered, um, I can d- I can deal directly with Walter. And for me, that's somebody that's kind of kind of close because, of course. You trust the person that you're in to to be honest with you, but in this instance, you 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 all are just getting to know each other, and they're dating multiple people. Why not take an opportunity to to get to know a little bit of insight about how Walter is? Um, and if you have a question, who better than to ask it than <clears throat> excuse me the person that was in a relationship with them? You know, because many of us, you ask us you know, about ourselves, we're going to, it's just natural human instinct almost to tell the best version of the story. It's not always going to, you're not always going to get some of the insight that you want to get or how the person experienced the person. Um, Because even with Naeem's ex, she mentioned about the not cuddling part. And, you know, those are some things that perhaps he wasn't aware of. And then Phil, Phil's ex talked about communication. So these are some things that you can kind of talk about and see if the person has learned from it. Is it something that they're aware of? So, you know, again, I think, uh, you know, going into it with the wrong attitude and and just being defensive and guarded for, for no reason. I know Kojo's camera's out. Okay, no problem. I'll go next. All right. Okay, so first of all, um, when it comes to uh, the ex, it wasn't just the nails. It was the hair, too. I don't know what was going on with that. I didn't see anything. And this is just me, not to be mean, not to be rude. But I didn't see anything that Walter would be attracted to. Um, And just how she presents herself, how she talks. uh, I just didn't see it there. Um, and I will say this, I'm going to give a, a word of advice, whether it's wanted or not. Ladies, if you are wearing clothing that you have to continuously cover up, continuously push back together so you don't expose yourself, find something else to wear. It makes, if I was on that date, it would make me feel uncomfortable. So the one now off of her back to Sabrina and Walter and Sabrina and the X interaction. Sabrina's interaction, um, to be honest with you, I was for it. The majority of it, I think 80% for, 20% against. The 20% that I was against was the fact that she wasn't open to answering those questions. Now, when she had, when it was her turn and her friends were able to grill Sean, she didn't stop them from asking questions. So she expected him to answer all of those questions. But by her being closed there, I think something was missing there. What I do like is this. Uh, Sabrina showed an era of confidence that is very attractive. So as soon as she saw Newman, um, 
or Minnie Mouse, because she came in and looked like Minnie Mouse to me. Um, as soon as she saw Mewman, she realized, okay, this is my competition. Could have been Slight Shade as well, but this is my competition. Okay, well, why am I even here? It's time for me to bounce. I'm about to go. And it's something about, there's something to say about a woman who knows, who feels confident in her interaction with a guy, in her connection with a guy to know where she is, to feel confident in knowing her place. But when knowing your place, you have to know with absolute certainty because if you think you know and it's false, then you can come out looking like a fool. But her interaction with Walter seems pretty genuine. It does. It, 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 the connection they have seems to be real. But that's the thing for her in the whole situation that jogged me the right way and jogged me the wrong way. I didn't like the fact that she wasn't more open because she was just put in a situation last her date was just put in a situation last week, but I did like her confidence in her connection with Walter to say, okay, it's time for me to leave. Whether she lied about leaving or not, if she saw that, if, if she saw the fact that she didn't need to be there, then I have to respect that. You know, I, I just love a woman who knows her place in a man's life. If you know he's not going anywhere, be confident in knowing he's not going anywhere. You don't have to ask a man five or six times, where are you going tonight? Who you been with? What you doing? If you know he loves you, be confident and sit in that. So that's something about uh, Sabrina that I really did enjoy. Um, now, I know we're talking about Sabrina Walter right now. So, Coach, let me know if this includes Newman in that interaction as well. Or we want to talk about her separately. Let me know. You can add a side note. Go for it. Okay. So, Newman, uh, like I said, um, I, her interaction was it was okay it was cool you know I'm not I'm not going I'm not going to say anything negative about that I just the outfit just really really got me but um, I was laughing for a second but uh, her excuse for leaving saying she got to go somewhere and sing <laughs> I I wasn't buying that now she didn't say a location a time place she didn't say anything that I got to go somewhere and sing like okay really but um I think I just think that. Um, Newman and Walter is not as solid as Sabrina and Walter from my viewpoint. So I think it was a wasted trip for Newman to be there, to be honest. I'm good. I'm done. I read that still. Mm-hmm. 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 Jay, you willing to act? Go for I'm... it. Yeah, oh, I'm with... Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm with Corey on um, a lot of it or whatnot. Um, I I don't know. It might be just women intuition. It was a little bit for me discomfort when moment did come. I don't. I, I, she's she has confidence. Sabrina has confidence. Don't get me wrong. But it was a little bit discomfort. And any woman, confident or not, will feel discomfort if another woman comes in the middle of your date with the potential that you're trying to you know gain. Or would not. It's just like, why are you here? I'm already dealing with the ex or ex booty call because that's what I got from that. And that's not nothing against that lady or whatnot. I just got it because, according to Walter, he's just been in the streets since his wife, his ex wife died. So um, his wife died. And so, you know, I can't see that as being a real true ex that's just probably more of a long-term booty call who might have turned into a friend or more so a friend slash love interest or whatnot um but you know i'm already dealing with this now here comes this other person that i'm competing on the show with interrupting the date and we probably just built up a good vibe and whatnot and it's just like uh okay here we go so the confidence in her says, OK, let me go ahead and exit the premises. I got some other things I can do. I don't need to sit around to hear what y'all got to say. I'll let y'all have your time. I done had mine. And because she was already closed off to the ex questions or whatnot, it's just like, OK, I don't need to sit around through anything more or what, you know, it is what it is. Uh it was funny to me that and ironic that, you know, your friends was OK to add Sean and watch or whatever. And they answered, however. But then when this person comes along, it's like, I don't need to speak to you. 
I don't have to speak to you. I don't need, I'll talk to him about any of this that you're talking about. But, you know, as somebody on the panel last week said, when we got to this whole conversation about friends, <laughs> they're going to speak directly to that person, not to the, the friends, the exes, or anybody else. So, you know, after talking to them, I got to understand it of why some people are like that. So I can't say much to it. <laughs> All I say is, you know, it's just quite ironic that you know your people's is okay to ask these questions and i'm expecting the answer and when it's my turn you know it doesn't ha happen that way uh or whatnot but i do feel out of both dates that him and sabrina are still more equally yoked than walter and moomin um, and I do understand that she had to change her heart of kids. I don't think kids was ever out of the picture. I think it was just more so for her because she's taking care of her parents. And let me say now, rest in peace uh, to your mom, Sabrina, and my condolences and prayers up to your family um, of the loss of your mom just now. But because she was taking care of both parents and her daughter, another kid just wasn't feasible at the time. Um, as time goes on, She's still young enough to produce more. Um, if she chooses to go that route, I, I know it gets a little bit more difficult as we get older and up into our late 40s and 50s or whatnot. And she's not quite there yet, but she does have time to still preserve eggs or whatnot and choose a route that is convenient for her to move forward and have in future kids with somebody if she found the right person. So I don't think it was always totally off the table I think for the most part because she was dealing with so much it wasn't just one of them options that she really wanted to actively pursue and if somebody was coming into her life wanting that right away it was just going to be like no nah, that's not going to happen for me so I know later on that she will get to it where Phil mentions that she had the change of heart and it was kind of a reason why she was put into the bottom later on but I could see why the change of heart would be there because when you're dealing with certain situations, bringing a new life into a bit much is way too much. You know, when you're really thinking about the big picture of everything, of wanting to give the attention to your spouse, wanting to give the attention to the baby. And I got a kid already and taking care of parents. That is a lot on one person to be spreading themselves that thin. So I can understand why it was in limbo for her on that part. Um, but overall, I think the day with her and uh, Walter was really good. Um, and we'll get to the rest as far as the ending where she is and her personality then. Good one there, Jay. Thank you very much. Shout out to Sabrina in the chat too. Um, Siwe, go for it. Yeah, I'm trying to because I agree with so much that Jay said. First, of course, condolences to your mother, Sabrina. I'm really sorry um, to hear that. Um, so I just want to say that first and first and foremost. Um, from that, from the, the particular scene with Sabrina and Walter, um, I, I like most people in the chat, and like Corey said uh, when you were gone, Kojo, I really feel like the, 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 the production had to have found uh, Walter's ex, like, yesterday she really just seemed like a paid actress she didn't seem like she i mean she seemed like she was a wonderful sweet woman um and that they had got to know each other maybe the day before but the the math was not mathing with that whole situation i'm not even gonna get on the nails or anything else but it just it just wasn't wasn't really making sense um and i would love to know if production actually had a hand in that because that just was not uh not adding up but I just want to talk about Walter for a second. Walter, to me, is all over the place. Um, I don't know why I don't particularly trust him 100%, but I just really don't. Uh, don't ask me for facts or proof or data. I don't got it. I'm just saying that I just don't. I'm not fully trusting Walter, and I just want to put that, you know, out there. Mostly, I will say later on, his kind of flip-flopping, moving Mumin to 1A to 1B to 1C.5. I feel like that all kinds of adds up to, to my issues with where he's at and what, what he wants. In addition to the kids thing, which I would love to know 
which side that end up falling on. But if you say you want kids and you want somebody who may not want kids, it seems like you're not taking the process seriously unless there's been a change of heart that kind of solidified that whole situation. Um, as to leaving, as to the abrupt leaving, um, I just want to say I, I disagree with Corey that Sabrina's reason for leaving was any different than Mumin's. It both seemed abrupt and it both seemed that production was asking them to leave. That's what I got. Because it seems like a, a production gives them an excuse to say, I got to leave. Well, it actually looked like Sabrina had someplace to go because she was dressed uh, to the nines. It looked like she really did have someplace to go. But even still, they both seem like very abrupt, you know, leaving. So I think that's production. But we learn later with the conversation with Sabrina and, and Frank that during elimination week, the dudes be going ghost. And then when it's not elimination week, they don't go ghost. So I don't know if that played into the attitude or what we kind of saw. Um, but I would kind of be annoyed too if to be participating in a group date when you don't call me when there's elimination, when it's elimination week. And then the next week when the men are on the chopping block, then all of a sudden you guys are calling. Which, you know, reminds you more and more that this is a game show. I think we want to believe that, you know, everyone is truly, truly trying to find love. That's what we want to believe. I think us who love love, we want to believe that's what's going on. But I think time and time again, if you hear that people are looking for connections one week and they're not looking for it another week when it's elimination week, that just seems like there's a there's a game, you know, going on. But I will, to be fair... The way Sean was treated the week before, the day before, I don't know what, what minutes it was in real life. I think, to be fair, if you put somebody through that, it would be fair to answer the question of the ex. If you believe this was a real ex, if you didn't believe it was a real ex and you thought that the production was playing in your face and with your time, I wouldn't blame you for leaving. But if it was a real ex, you know, I think it's fair to answer the questions just on the point that you, you know, that the friends last week put Sean through hell because he kind of went, he, he went through the fire kind of unnecessarily. Um, so that, that would, that would be, you know, just to be fair, but you know, Walter, you know, if Walter's 100, I think they would be a beautiful couple, but some ain't sitting right. And I'm sure time will tell what it is, but some not sitting right with me with Mr. Walter. I rock to that. I've rocked to that. Yep, hundred percent. Has everyone spoken on this subject? Anyone want us hit it again? Anyone else got any other points you want to make? Yes. Go for it, bro. Um, I will say this though. I, I just wanted to say that when it comes to uh, Walter's ex, what I would have done in that situation is I would have taken her shopping or something. You know, I would have asked her what she would have been wearing the next day uh, for this meetup. <laughs> The reason for that is because you're now representing me and I need to know what you're going to have on. Okay. We're going to be on a TV show. You're my ex. I need to know what you have on, but not even only that I've been paying attention to everyone's exes versus what everyone said when they first started the open casting, right? When they said, describe the type of woman you want, these exes are not the women they describe. So it seems like they want a huge upgrade from what they described, I mean, from what they were, were accustomed to. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to upgrade, but it makes it seem like you're reaching for the sky when you will accept something that may be in the cloud. I mean, you know, maybe, you know. So to me, I just feel like it says something about not preparing her, not getting her ready for the date and to have those, you know, those back scratches on. I just don't understand why the loudness um, if that's her, that's cool. Um, but I just would have died it down a little bit for the, for that little time there. Um, now, as far as Walter is concerned, Walter, I don't, I, I, I didn't really see that closeness he had with Newman. Like when she was there, I was really surprised by it because I don't see that interaction with her enough for him to want to invite her there to meet the ex. You see what I'm saying? So I see Sabrina, but I didn't see it from you. Know, I just wanted to make that point. I'm sorry. No, you're good, man. That's not always at all. I hear that. I hear that 100%. Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking to myself, well, not about that. I, was, I mean, the ex was a bit wild. The nails were wild. That was what that was wild. Um, but then I was thinking, obviously, if, you know, um, I see where he said, like, you know, if, if, 
if Sabrina put you know up uh, the <laughs> put Sean through the through the through the through the fire, like his name is Daniel uh, Meshach and Abednego, then you know I was expecting that she'd also be able to stay and be grilled too if it's by the ex, you know. So for me that was the only thing because when she left it felt like oh okay it looks like it feels like she's just leaving, you know what I mean? It just feels like she just wants to get out of there. Um, and Mamine, it, Mamine too, it felt like she wanted to get out of there too. Do you know what I mean? It, it felt like both people wanted to get out of there early. Um, so yeah, for me, I I, I, I would have said that same thing. I, I thought if Sabrina was going to be able to give, you know, Sean the, 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 the grillings of his lifetime, you know, let her friends do that. She should have been open to staying and, and let, letting him grow her or letting the ex grow her as well. So I thought that would only be fair. You know what I'm saying? But again, my condolences to Sabrina as well in terms of family. Uh, what were you going to say, Sean? Nothing. Okay, you just like you're poised. All right, cool. Um, all right, cool. Let's, uh, let's, sh- is the- ah, whoa, what about the scene? Okay, no, wait, because Sabrina's still involved. Sabrina was involved with a conversation with Frank, the end scene. Um, I don't know if anyone else had a little point to add about that, because obviously she said the men weren't contacting. I see where you, I know you kind of mentioned it, but it said the men weren't really contacting her on their week you know um wants to kind of get you guys perspective if you have one if not we'll, we'll shift on go for a seaway i was gonna say that's kind of what do they call it the breaking the fourth wall type mm. type vibe i appreciated getting that context because i feel like within this show more than the other shows we really are not we're not we don't know what the hell is going on half the time yeah it's really really frustrating so it was actually interesting to hear that you know look like you can come on you can don't i like the don't blow smoke up my behind like don't come to me like oh, i gotta fix things when i'm reaching out to you and you're not answering i mean first of all i don't even know i don't know why in god's green third or she was even reaching out to frank anyway i wouldn't have called him at all uh but that aside is like if if you guys are trying to be interested don't don't pretend like you're interested and then you don't call i think that was helpful to know you know kind of the backstory what's going on because clearly, clearly, some people are playing, playing around. So I appreciate the honesty. And Frank didn't have nothing to say about it, so he knows it's true. Go for Sean. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't have anything to to add to that. I think it was an interesting conversation. I guess we would need more context to to understand what what happened and what transpired between them because it seemed like you know Sabrina was was ready to go in and I'm not sure if she felt like she might be eliminated so she was like listen to hell with it I'm just going to tell you exactly how I feel and you're going to get everything that I've been thinking and feeling so if I go home I go home I'm just going to let you know or um there was you know something genuine there that she was really disappointed in um, you know, directly with Frank, but uh, she was she was definitely fired up that night. I mean, that day. Um, so that's what I saw. Mm, I hear you on that. I hear you on that. Uh, Jay, go for it. Eliminated or not eliminated, and most of the ladies in the around would contest to this. If I'm reaching out to you and you not responding to me, game show or not. You're going to get these words, okay? And you're going to get them just like this. This is point blank, Frank, John, Adam, all of y'all going to get this smoke real quick because I'm reaching out to you and you're going to sit in my face and act and make it seem like everything is cool, everything is okay or whatnot. And granted, it's a game show, so it's definitely about to be on 10 because on your week of elimination, you're making sure you're contacting me. You're 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 there when I need you and all this stuff like that. When I don't need you, when I don't want to see you, you're around. But all of a sudden, it's the diff- It's Women's Week, and like she said, you could tell nobody contacted me when it's our week to go home, but one person. And I reached out to you and you decided days later that you wasn't going to do it. So, yes, not let's not pussyfoot around about anything you got to say to me right now. Just come out blunt and either send me home so I can go home and buy my way and go on about my life and do what I got to do. Or tell me I'm going to stay and don't give me no thing that, oh, you're doing this and you need to do this better or whatnot because I'm reaching out. 
it was even funny when she was like, shoot, I need to pursue the women because they're going to appreciate the way that I'm reaching at these people right now. You know, shoot, I'm reaching at the men harder than the men reaching at us. So that lets you know a lot about how the men are playing this game. Like, for the most part, it sounds like more like they're playing and not really in the pursuit of trying to find actual love outside of field because, you know, clearly he keeping all his connections, you know, but <laughs> everybody else is okay, when it, when it's weak for us to go home, let me reach out. But when it's not, I'm just going to reach to the people that I really got a strong connection with. Don't waste my time. Because that helps me narrow, narrow down what I need to do in this situation as well. So if you're not feeling me, that's cool. Don't feel me. And I can go on about my business and, and put my energy and attention into those that are. And so, like Seaway say, I do appreciate this conversation because if you're not here for real love and I'm, and you're not here for me, don't pretend like you are. Let's not play at all. We are grown. And in this situation, we can be a grown adults and a, and a competition on a game show. And if I happen to be the one that gets eliminated just because I don't have a connection, just let it be. So that's where I felt that she was going with it, you know, and that's just me. Mm. <laughs> I'm playing. Um, no, no, I'm hearing what you guys are saying. Um, I don't know. So, so maybe someone can correct me. If I remember correctly, um, I think if I heard correctly, Serena said she's been reaching out to them the whole entire time. Well, then, since nothing's changed, if you've been reaching out to these men since the beginning, nothing's changed. Like uh, maybe maybe I didn't hear it properly, so I might have misheard what she had said. No, if they're I remember, blowing, they blow up her phone. She's saying they they will respond and blow up her phone on the weeks that that the the yeah. men are getting eliminated. But she was the one that was initiating it. That's what she said. She says he always initiates. Then nothing's changed. If you always well, initiate see, with men, they respond. I think the mm -hmm. response is what changes. I get oh, what okay. you're saying. Oh, yeah, the, the men responding has changed. The men are not responding that week. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like she said, Frank, yeah, she said, Frank take two or three days to respond back or whatever, opposed to the week when it's theirs, he, he'll respond back a, a lot sooner. Mm, okay, fair enough. Mm, okay, well, that's fair enough, you know. Um, you know, listen, you know what? That's a great sign to say. Drop these, drop these uh, young boys. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Sad, to, sad to say, but you gotta drop them. You know what I mean? But this is, but this is the difficulty of the game, right? It is a difficult. This is the difficulty of the game. It's such a tough game because part of this is strategy, right? Part of the game is strategy. People are on the. Some people are on the show that shouldn't be on the show, right? If it's if it's strictly votes. Some people are on the show that are not meant to be on the show. It happens every season. So there is a, there's an element of strategy to it. And so, I listen, she had to call them out um, and, let, and let, Frank, let Frank know, hey, uh, uh, you know, my brother, <laughs> you're going to bring me all the way out here to the countryside and looking at this green, green grass and, you know, you don't be replying to my messages. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's yeah, I... I I get it. I get. It. I get why she might have been frustrated. Um, mm, let me say nada. Let me say nada. Um, anyone else want to have a little uh, shot? Yeah, I'll take one. Go for it. All right. So for me, um, I am a firm believer that a man should lead. There is no way, whether it's Sabrina, whether it's any woman, period, should be chasing a man. It is the man's job to pursue the woman. It's the man's job to court the woman. So when you find yourself in a situation, at some point, you have to take a step back and be like, you know, I shouldn't be doing this and stop. Um, whether it's a game show, whether it's not, um, just the self-respect out of that alone, you know, just just kind of um, just get that, just rid yourself of that, having to do that. Uh, I know a lot of women are, uh, kind of chasing men nowadays, but that's 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 throwing off the natural essence of life, in my own opinion. I think that um, the man is supposed, like I said, the man is supposed to pursue 
but a woman is to show interest so she appreciates that 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 um that man making those efforts but a woman should not have to continuously just be the only one pursuing something is wrong i know sometimes people get busy i know i do sometimes um but there should be something there that shows that there is an interest in you and not just when it's time to be eliminated you know when you're all about to be on the chopping block now you want to do that um i think a lot of men are on the show for the wrong reasons uh i think that um especially frank is one that really stands out to me and we'll talk about him once once we get to that but i just think that i just wanted to make that point that i'm on the side of a man leading in a relationship a man leading in pursuing a woman and a woman should not have to go through what Sabrina or any other woman who's out here doing that uh, is going through. That's all. <laughs> oh, sorry, Corey. Good points. I agree. I think women shouldn't chase men. But this right here is absolutely <laughs> diabolical. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> this is diabolical. You see? You see? This is like a, this is it's got to be off of Reddit, Happy Princess. This can't be real. This got to be <laughs> off of Reddit. It, it kind of makes sense, though. It, it kind of makes sense. This is too <laughs> He was out of options, so he ended up taking her. That's what I mean, Honestly, that's, that's bro, that is literally it. Yeah, I ran out of options, and you were the option that was ready, and I took it. Uh, this is the honest truth, you know. But you can't tell you can't tell some women this. Like you, you tell some women like don't pursue, they don't listen. People want to do what they want to do. You know what? You make a good point, Seaway. But I think a lot of women also don't know exactly what truly is that definition of pursue. Not to say that they're slow, but that that true definition of what pursuing is, because they feel like they're just being nice to a guy. You know, that's all that's all they're doing is being nice, but it's actually in that pursuit category. If you're following up behind them, um, if he's not showing any type of effort towards you, then that is you kind of more so pursuing him than you. If he's showing interest, if he's if you guys have phone calls on text messages and there's some type of back and forth conversation, then that's cool. But if he's just one sided, like 90 percent of the time then no, that's not a good move. This is ruthless. I'm sorry. I just, it's the fact that it came out when he's drunk and he just said to his friends that, you know, he found her ugly. Uh, um, Oh, real quick on the ugly topic. Okay. He found her unattractive, right? mm. Now, a lot of people, I don't think anyone no one wants to be considered unattractive to their partner, yeah, you know? Um, but there are a lot of people who are in relationships right now with someone who they don't think really meets the bar, you know, but they can't tell their partner that their partner think they're cute in their eyes. They're attractive in their eyes, but really you just got a real dope personality. Listen, I'm going to say this now. Just lie to me. I'll put my business out there, Corey. Shut I'm up. I'm sorry. I didn't say your name. I didn't say your name. Yo. <laughs> Yo. I'm just going to type away right now. Yo. <laughs> <I'm log off>. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> nah, listen, I listen. I ain't gonna lie to you, yeah. Because this whole, cause listen, I think for I don't know but with women, but uh, no, it's not the same. I don't think it's the same with women and men because men don't usually do the whole. I didn't find you attractive, and I started dating you. Women tend to do this more. It's like I didn't find you attractive in the beginning, but then when I got to know you, I found you attractive. Listen, one girl, t- one of my exes told me that. Let me tell you that I started cheating on her. Listen, anyway, but um, the real stuff here, obviously, you know. Yeah, I know. I know what I know. in the Zach? What in the Zach? Huh? Are we going on? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, you listen, listen. Nobody wants to. <laughs> nobody wants to be able to. Nobody wants to know that you found them unattractive. Please keep that secret to yourself. This is what I'm gonna say to you, ladies. Please keep it to yourself. All right. Please keep it. To yourself. I don't need to know that you didn't fancy me in the beginning. Some of you wear it like a badge of honor. Like I didn't fancy him in the beginning, and then I found him attractive. Listen, it is not a badge of honor. You don't need to wear it. Okay. Keep that secret to the grave. Wear it between your bosom and take it to the grave. Okay. Hold it in your chest. Okay, all right. Hold it like his Vicks. Hold it there, 
and go into the rave. Yes, I want the revenge. You're absolutely right. I'm just, oh, I'm no, just this, kidding. This you stand on your wallet. You should, you should be past that at this point. Who cares yeah. if they think you're attractive or not? Your response is, I'll be ugly. What, uh, what did no. Jay-Z say? What did Please. Jay-Z say? I don't want any girls that are going to come into my chat telling me, listen, I didn't find your tracks at first, but then my personality banged. I don't care my personality bangs. I know my personality bangs already. I don't want you to think my personality bangs. I want you to like me from the Be very beginning. Be a handsome, ugly ninja. <laughs> no, Jay, you, you, you can't say that because they don't understand that in the chat and they're going to get going again. We can't say he's speedy and ugly. We can't say he's no, speedy and ugly. If you think I'm medium <laughs> ugly, leave me alone. If you think I'm medium ugly, leave me alone. Medium. I don't want it. Medium. I don't it's want small, it. It's small, medium, ugly. I don't That's want my medium, small, medium. We're <laughs> enough. They go to sleep, please. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, see, wait. We're going to log off. <laughs> please, the both of you. Like, but I'm going to be different. You should not be named calling. So no, I, I don't, don't you can name call me. I don't mind being, you know, if, if someone thinks that I'm medium ugly, that's good. That's their that's at least they tell me at least they know from the jump. Don't come in there and be like, oh, his personality bangs, that's why I like him. Don't have you fancy me or you don't fancy me. It's okay, don't force yourself to like me. You understand? There's no point. Do you know what I mean? Like, nah. I think it's the that's halfway cute in the chat for me. It's the halfway cute. Turn it, fix it to halfway cute. I like that. That's, that's our way. That's how better. That's more PG. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know, but how, what about you, Sean? You, you maybe you maybe 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 you're different. I don't want that. Maybe Sean, if they ain't a ten, Sean ain't dating them. We gotta be. I don't know, Sean. What, if if you know if a lady if a, if your woman told you she didn't fancy at first. You know, but you know, she grew to like you. I mean, could you could you rock with that? I mean, I can't. I'm just saying I can't, but maybe you can. You know, I've done it before. No, no. It's it's either you into me or you not. That's it. And 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 the same, you know, from me to her. So yeah, it's it's I'm I don't want no gradual attraction. If we built to it, you know, either you're you're into me or you're not. And if you're not, that's cool. We can we we don't we don't have to go there. So I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm gonna lie to my grave. Corey, what are you saying? Okay, give me, so, the, give, me the, give me give me give me the question one more time. I'm sorry. sorry. Handsome light. Um, yeah, the question. question. I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be hearing us up in here. Handsome light. What about handsome light? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Corey. The question is: Could you? Could you? Would you be comfortable date? No, I'm not saying you're comfortable, but would you, if you're in a situation where your partner uh, or someone that you're liking is saying, listen, hey, look, you know, I didn't fancy you at first, you know, but I grew to like you. It, would you be cool with that? Would you be okay with that? I think Corey might be okay. Corey, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that okay before. That. I've done that before. Be. Well, you've yeah. done it before. As in, you've been the one that said the person is not that nice and then you like them after. Well, no, I won't say, I won't say it's for personality. You're talking about attractiveness or are you talking about just personality? I'm talking about the fact that you didn't find them attractive at first. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't find him very attractive at first. That personality wore me over. Um, wow. But I still dated him. Listen, man, I'm 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 the type of guy. I'm the type of guy who will not leave anything to chance. There are some good people out here. If you're good for me and you just happen to be not as attractive as I want you to be, the good for me outweighs that. I mean, mm. seriously. So, dope personality is really where it is for me. I, I just, it's no cap when it comes to that. So that was you. You wouldn't mind if she said the same thing. Yeah, to my face, yeah. I didn't tell her. I didn't say, hey, guess what? You're not attractive to me. I like your person. No, I wouldn't do that. That's disrespectful. That's wrong. I wouldn't want her to tell me either. Egg me on, boost my ego, let me think I'm cute. That's fine with me. I'm cool with never not it would not ever knowing that. But I think it's important to <laughs> dig a little bit deeper than just looks because looks can come and go. Honestly. I agree. I agree. I'm gonna go with Lyndon though. Please lie to me. Okay? Lie to me. Don't don't tell me the truth. I don't need to know that truth. I need to, I don't, don't just, this is a lie that's acceptable, guys. Okay. This one won't take you to hell. Absolutely. It's a lie that's acceptable. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to tell us. Okay. Uh, I'll keep it real. This is one of those moments. Don't keep it real. Don't say it. All right. We don't need to know. All right. Yeah. We don't need to know. Some of us are handsome light. So <clears throat> it is what it is. You say it's your name. I don't. Huh? I just feel most women. That's not their focus. I mean, yeah, you want to be attractive, but when we think about know. reasons why women date, whether you're yeah. you're you're whatever, it's like handsome very light. low. Handsome light is like you know, great, but 
Yeah, but you know, I don't want. You know what? Do you know what? I my brain is very imaginative. You know that you see you see what they did to Walter. See how they did Walter. She didn't do not. She did not do that for Sean. The way she entered with Walter was like, and the girls were like, "I told you he's attractive." Da 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 da. When it was Sean, there was none of that. It's because of his money. Know. It was because of his job. It wasn't his attraction. He was attractive. Baby, they weren't talking about Walter's money. Job. They were talking about Walter, how handsome he was. They weren't talking about his money. They were talking about how handsome he was. They weren't talking about he his money. He was handsome because she probably pre-warned him that he had a job. <laughs> no, Seaway. They did not do that, Seaway. They were saying how good-looking he was. There, there's really hardly a difference between Walter. Maybe I just don't care for whatever, but... I don't really see a difference between Walter and Sean, except for one has a job and one doesn't, or one doesn't have a clear job. That's the only difference. Well, at least we all got jobs here, so we'll be all right for that one. All right. If, all right. if Sean had a job, he would have been fine. She'd be like, ooh, girl, you know how fine he is if he had a good job? See, but you honestly believe that? I'm telling you how, how women are, yes. Is that what we're, let's ask a chat. Chat, is that what is going on? Man got a good, decent job, suddenly we're handsome, yeah? Okay, okay. Uh, Oh, God. No, the, the, the more money you get, Kojo, the more subscribers you get, the finer you're going to get. They're going to get in there. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll do that for I'll do that for I don't oh, know. Sean's Sha- Sha- kind of fine. I'm sorry. That chocolate and their <laughs> muscles was kind of fine. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. That handsome light. I hear you. Handsome light with the weighty pockets. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Handsome <laughs> light. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> I'm seeing that handsome light with the way the pockets. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Yeah, my cute. <laughs> what do you say? Wait. What halfway cute? You said my cute. It's like you know, semi chocolate. You're not quite dark chocolate. You're not quite milk. You semi. You know. So you semi cute. <laughs> I like you. Uh, that is. Uh, please let us know how you do that because that is an enigma. <laughs> A robber says she's not saying anybody that's ugly to her. Mm, 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 mm. All right, cool. Let's move on the conversation. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we can chop up a little bit later. Um, there was also, uh, we had Mameen. Uh, you know, Mameen was also uh, in the conversation. I'm still surprised Mameen has still got a connection with Frank when he's super sexual. I don't, I don't see why she's still open to this connection. It sounded very naivete for me, really. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there, but I mean, obviously had Walter and Frank. I want to get you guys, you know, kind of thoughts around her particular interactions and what you saw of her. I mean, I, I think she asked some. Well, we didn't get to hear much of her in Walter's date, and we didn't get to hear much of her actually in Frank's date. We heard her ask one question. I think it was one or two, and she asked a question about, you know, uh, what does a good woman look like or something like that for him. So, good question there. But yeah, I want to kind of get you guys' perspective because obviously she's still. I don't get this whole... And then, also, uh, Walter also wants to have sex. So, I mean, this girl's it's in a rock and a hard place. She needs to quit. That's what she needs to do. But anyway, those are you guys' thoughts. Well, okay. Look, I'll go. You, you, have, you have her talking about... You have Mumi talking about Frank is so special. And when she said Frank was so special, I was like, Mumi, tell us anything. You just tell us anything at this point. I I don't I don't know what's so special. We haven't seen what is so special. I just feel like Mumin is just such a sweet sweet lady, but she just just says like literally literally whatever, and that was just really really confusing. And then you go to the to the date with Walter, um, and the ex asked her, you know, about the whole sex thing, and she kind of like puts it out there. Um, I'm not having sex before marriage. That is something I stand on, you know, whatever. I've talked to Walter about that. Who out the bam, that's fine. Um, and then the side note, the ex is telling Walter, yeah, she just needs a commitment. And then I'm sure she'll, you know, she'll drop the draws later pretty much, which I don't know what where she got, she gathered those facts, but she seemed pretty, pretty convinced that that was going to be. And hell, that could be true. But as of right now, she's saying that she's not into that. So uh, Walter in the background talking about Fifty Shades of Light Skin and laughing like it was cute. I'm just like, what is cute about any of this stuff? It's a complete mixed match. She wants to be celibate before marriage, and you're talking about Fifty Shades of Light Skin. The the math is not mathing. This is just, I don't know. So I don't know why Mumin is just going with the flow, floating around, 
it, none of her connections really make a lot of sense. And the ex says that Mumin is the safe route. Yeah, for Walter, but it's not a good it's not a good pick for Mumin if she doesn't want to, you know, be tempted. So I don't know. I think it was said on Miss Misha's channel that she Mumin needs to go over there to Cornelius and be with him. Because Ooh, I almost said something. But if that was to work, she should go over there. Okay? If that if that can work, she should go over there. Otherwise, her match is, you know, not on the show. And that that's just that. Mm. Hear that hundred. Hundred. <clears throat> Dr. Nundi, haven't heard for you in a little while. Uh, what's your thoughts on uh Mumin? With Mumin, um, because of her standards and what she believes in, I don't feel like she needs to compromise who she is um concerning this dating process. If that is the standard that she has for herself, if the men are not willing to match that, then honestly she just needs to go ahead and get off the show and find someone that agrees with the same thing that she agrees in. She doesn't have to compromise herself. And unfortunately, when you are dating and being on these shows, they people make it seem as if you have to compromise yourself or go the way that they're going. But if that is not what she believes in and that's her standard, then that's her standard. And they're, they'll be unequally yoked because they don't understand her walk with Christ. They don't understand why she decides to do what she do. And it's just not going to work. And I hope people really understand the difference between celibacy and sexual abstinence because it's a difference. I spoke about it before, but when you say you are celibate, that means you don't plan on having sex or being married. Sexual abstinence just means you don't plan on having sex until you're married. So there's a difference between those two. So if you said or ever said that you are celibate, but you desire to get married and you do desire to have sex within that marriage, then you will have to, of course, renounce that promise or vow that you have made or that oath of covenant that you have made with celibacy. There are people that are celibate. They don't plan on having sex. They don't plan on being married. But if you desire to be married and you desire to be married and have sex within your marriage, then you are just abstaining from sex, sexual abstinence. But in Mooming's case, these guys have expressed to her a number of times that they don't plan on waiting before marriage. That's not the way that they're going because she's, you know, a, a daughter in Christ and she believes in biblical principles. There's no need for you to continue this process by trying to force something that is not there. And you don't want to be un unequally yoked with unbelievers if that is the way that you're standing on and going. And that's not for everybody. But those in the kingdom of heaven, we know what God asks us of, what Jesus asks of, of us, and what we follow. So in her case, it would probably be better for her to leave the show so she could find or be found by the guy that will be for her in her kingdom prophetic marriage. So in this case, yeah. And Walter, Walter already said it, even though he said in his confessional, he said 50 shades of light skin. That said enough already right there. If she, if, if she would have heard that little piece, hopefully that would have woke her up concerning it. But that said enough in itself like nothing else need to be said once he said that one little piece moment just need to go ahead and go her merry way so yeah <clears throat> wait what did he say about the 50 shades of light skin when was that what did he, what did he say when the ex asked her the direct question about you know about you having sex the ex asked her directly about that and she is said you know like i don't plan on having sex before marriage and so forth and then in the confessional part he was like well you know because I'm like 50 shades of light skin and so when he said that I was like mm, alright okay that was enough said right there okay oh so basically he's saying he's gonna he's gonna he's all about sex and he's going to
couldn't, couldn't hear you, Dr. Dr. Nundi, but I'm assuming you said yes. You can type in the chat. I don't think you said yes. Okay. Uh, You're muted, Koja. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I said, yeah, it's a mismatch um, between the two of them. So, um, yeah, he's definitely he's definitely going to, if if they get together, he's going to break it down, man. You know what I mean? Like, I just, yo, <laughs> I've been there, done that, man. Listen, even me trying to be celibate from is difficult, let alone someone saying that, uh, they're not being celibate and I'm going to try and entertain them. I am going to fall hard and purposely too. Um, so, Sean, what's your thoughts? Yeah, similar to what everyone was sharing earlier, I'm um I'm I'm not seeing Moomin's intentionality <clears throat> in the dating process, and and I said it a little, you know, a couple of episodes ago, playfully, you know, I just think she's a little, you know, she's kind of like in the clouds, because the guys that she is matching up with don't seem to align with what she wants, um, not even one of them, you know, Frank hypersexual and Walter he said 50 shades of light skin right and and his ex um you know she went immediately to that po point about sexuality and and you know and sex so for me i think she's she's swimming in the wrong lane again with um with with both of the guys she's matched herself up with so i don't know <clears throat> maybe she's one that's more of like to sit back and um let the guys come to her so those that's who she's getting and she's not a little bit more um i don't want to say aggressive but she's not necessarily showing the guys that maybe would be a better match that they're in, that she's interested and of course camille has all the ladies um scared to even talk to cornelius so that's apparent but so I don't I don't understand. I don't get her. Like if if you're saying you're doing X, but then every guy you're you you wind up on a date with or having a serious connection with is very different. So what what outcome are you really expecting? So that's my thought. I hear you, bro. I hear you. Intentionality. Mm. Uh Corey, what are you saying? Okay, so for me, I, I think that um, Muman is a, is a perfect example. Pretty woman um, wants to be happy, but I don't think she really truly understands what it takes to make her happy. So with that, um, you have to be someone who really knows yourself. And sometimes a lot of people enter into the dating world not knowing themselves, um, which ends the relationship like in a train wreck or you find out the person is not for you, you have to go your separate ways. I think that you need to take a step back and really um, pay attention to herself. But also um, something I saw in her interaction with Frank, she needs to pay attention to Frank because Frank was giving a lot of vibes during the interaction that I don't think she really was paying attention to. Like when she came up, he gave her a hug, said she was pretty. But the way he acknowledged Sydney when she came up was a wow moment for me. I was like, you did that right in front of her, bro? You that bold? I mean, Sydney looked nice. You know, great dress, body, had a little skin showing that was cool. But if you can't handle yourself with your woman, let's say, let's say, you know, what's his woman? If you can't handle that with your woman sitting right beside you without you doing an outburst like that, it really makes me catch, makes me question Frank's character and why is he really doing all of this? He looked at Muman like he wanted to jump all over her body, like sexually. He looked at Sydney like he's already done it. He looks at her like I've been there already. I've done it already. Now it's your turn. So to me, he looked at her while she was talking, licking his lips, looking her up and down. He had a lot of odd behavior, a lot of red flag behavior um, that I saw coming from Frank. And that's something that she has to pay attention to. That's something every woman has to pay attention to. But in a situation where 
a man or a woman has to choose between two people, two or more people, you got to pay attention to how to interact with you versus how to interact with other parties, especially if you're in that, in that same space. And I thought that was something that, um, the Mewen didn't, didn't really pay attention to because she was still about, about Frank at the end of the whole thing. So those should be some things that would have turned her off. I would have thought, but again, it takes a woman who's confident, one who knows herself, knows what she's willing to deal with, know what she's not willing to deal with and stand her ground on those things. So that's my two cents about her. Bro, I, 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 yeah, I, I saw, I saw that. Um, yeah, I saw how he got excited when when Sydney came in the room as well, man. I said, I was, I was like, whoa, if you get that excited, bro, you 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 go and kill your market out here, bro. He said, wow. I said, okay. Um, yeah, Seaway, what's your thoughts? I think I went on this already, didn't I? Or no? You're already. Mm. I think so. mm-hmm. you, have you got ready? Okay, maybe she's got ready. Okay, sorry, see wait. Apologies. I started. Okay. It's Jay. Jay, sorry, it's Jay. Um, I'm pretty much where everybody is. I'm not sure um why movement continues. Um, I don't know if they get any perks or anything for staying on longer. I would say it's exposure, but there's people around that says they I don't really listen to gospel music so you know but I guess she's already known in the gospel world so I'm not sure why she's sticking around clearly there's nobody there that is truly for her because Cornelius is already marked off by Camille and her and Camille being close friends there's probably a girl code there that they just not going across that um, so I don't know, maybe she's just not attracted to Cornelius. I don't know. But as far as the other men there, none of them are living up to her moral standards. So I don't see her point of being there. But to segue over to Frank and his situation, um, when she did walk up, Frank did try to give her a kiss if you really pay attention to it, but she turned her face uh, away from it. When Sydney came up, you know, of course, they've kissed before, so it wasn't much. But Sydney did kind of turn her face, I think, just out of respect of the other ladies being there or whatnot. Um, but it was weird to me, and I don't know if anybody else picked it up, but the ex was giving a lot more energy to the situation. Like, she was trying to form a little something, and, like, her and Frank is not totally closed off yet of whatever they had going on and doing um, – like she looked like she was down for some situations and she was checking out the ladies, her daggone self. Um, I don't know. That's just the vibe that I was getting from her. You know, like they trying to plot. I, Frank looked like he had the little bird man r- hand rubs going on, trying to plot something with the ex. I don't know. But it was just kind of creepish to me and weird energy from both the ex and Frank because it just feel like they were vetting for a third party in their situation more so than anything. But I do like... Sydney coming with her list of questions because she said this is a person that she's been eyeing for a while and it showed some more depth and another uh, side of Sydney that, you know, she will get down to really trying to explore and get to know a person uh, a little bit more and better than, you know, what her friends had to say about it and the pageantry answers that he gave the friends before. So I wasn't I wasn't mad at her at all for having her list of questions and really getting into it with the ex about it. Um, Moment asked her questions and there was a third person on that date, wasn't it? Who was the third person? I feel like he had three people there. I don't know. Maybe it's just his ex was there. Her energy was just giving me another person competing. I don't know. But it was a lot. I don't know. I don't know. Frank, I reserve. I, he creeps me a little bit, but that's just me. Some Somebody out there, he got somebody out there for him. Uh, that's all I'll say. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Um, yeah, I mean, the Frank and woman situation, I don't know what the heck's going on there. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Walter was holding hands with Sabrina at the table. Yeah, that's very true, actually. Um, yeah, no, to me, a Frank and Moomin thing doesn't make sense. I think she might be just on here to get get her coins up, get as many episodes underneath her belt, maybe to get paid by the episode. I'm not sure. 
because uh, there really isn't anybody here who's trying to match her her vibe. So um, yeah, she needs that needs to change. Her and Walter situation, yeah, done deal, baby. You can't pretend as if you didn't hear him. She's doing what Naeem is doing, which is ignoring the red flags. Just to, I, I think they're looking to stay on the show. I think, I think the show is probably maybe the show is even helping them stay on the show as well because none of this makes sense to be honest. None of it, and I guess it's to stop the show be ending early because to be honest, this show could have ended with the way they've the way they've edited it. It could have ended in the first like five episodes because most people are not compatible. You know what I mean? So uh, again, that's a storytelling issue. They'll have to go and sort that out for next season. But hey ho. Um, let's move on then uh, to another couple, uh, or at least another couple. Let's move on to uh, <laughs> let's move on to Sydney. Um, Sydney was putting in work today, bruv. I mean, she put work on Frank. She put work on Phil. Um, shoot, you know, she put some major vibes and works in, and I clock I clocked her with the Phil situation. This girl is undercover competitive, right? This whole <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> don't let it fool you. The girl's competitive and she lacks attention. I'll be honest with you, she lacks attention because the Phil situation, yeah, nothing wrong with the Phil situation, nothing wrong with you liking Phil. What I picked up from what you're from the language you use when you say he never noticed me at the pool party but i noticed him and because of that i wanted to get to know him just because he didn't give you the attention i now have to look at you differently i now have to look, you, you are now you are now somebody who wants attention right because if it was just a case of okay you guys have spoken and we know already yeah we already know that phil said he wanted to take her on a date or whatever whatever i, I know that but uh, you know, let's let's keep it a buck, sis. You actually said what you actually said that he was at the pool party, right? And he didn't give you any attention, and then you that's what's driven you to now want to make get to know Phil even more. Like you, that intrigued you the fact that he didn't come over to talk to you, as if you almost owed that someone should come over and talk to you. And that's when I clocked, I said, No, no, baby, no, no, baby. Mm-mm. I see you now, sis. Mm-hmm. I see you now, sis. Mm-hmm. You got a little bit of an ego. Mm-hmm. You got a little bit of pride in you, baby. Okay. You wanted to be tickled. You like a little bit of attention. And at that point, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. At that point, I bowed out. You know, I was down for Sydney, but at that point, I bowed out. You know what I mean? I said, nah, Sydney's great. She's amazing, but not for me. You know, I couldn't do it. I don't I don't like people like that. Do you know what I mean? That that gameplay vibes for me. But you guys may have seen it differently. You might have had something different. You might have seen it from a different perspective. Um, you know, she's putting work in on Frank as well, you know. She was doing them and she, honestly, I think with the Frank situation, she's touchy feely already, but I think she was putting extra work in just for mummy to let mummy know that it's there's you're not capturing this guy. You know what I mean? So that whole, you know, getting up. Oh, Frank is sweat. Frank is sweating, and then dabbing his face. Baby, get, get sit, 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 sit your ass down, sit your ass down, girl. Don't need to be, you know what I mean. Anyway, what's your guys' thoughts? Um, uh, what, what's your thoughts, man? Let me know, you know, what you guys are thinking uh, about the situation in Sydney. Um, maybe you got a different perspective to what I saw. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know. Mm. <clears throat> oh, okay. Go for it, Corey. All right. So um, I'll say this much for Sydney. I think that she realized she can't put all her eggs in one basket on this show. She needs to go out and see something else, see what else is out there. But I think she was surprised at how well she and, and Phil got along. I like the energy, to be honest with you. Uh, the workout energy, school, some light flirting. But she, she was laying it on a little thick. But uh, yeah, it was some light flirting there. They seem like they had a good vibe. So I think we may see a shift um, on the next upcoming episodes, but uh, that's something that remains to be seen. But I did like her vibe there. Um, Frank, I think whatever we're seeing with Frank, I think she's starting to see that. For her to have so many questions in her phone, and she scrolled up once, I was like, okay, cool. Nothing wrong with that. She did like three times. There was still questions in there. So I don't know if she was on a website or something like that with those questions on there, but I did like some of the questions that they were asking. 
I was a fan of the questions because it reached a, deep, a deeper place. Um, and the question they had for her, for the for Frank's ex, who to me was not a surprise. Just wanted to say that it was not a surprise about Frank's ex. But I will say that she answered those questions as honest as she possibly could. She seemed very genuine in answering those questions that the ladies had for her. But Frank was like, he really wanted her to like pump him up. But she was giving some truth um, to the ladies. So when it comes to Sydney, I think the question she had, the initiative she had to even have those questions available. If you don't know what questions to ask, it's okay to look it up. If you want to find out something deeper about a person, look it up. Google. It's okay. You want to make sure you're not wasting your time. So I, I respect that. But I also respect the fact that she knew she could not put her all her eggs in one basket. So she elected Phil. Phil, it seems like the the go-to guy. He's a neutral guy. Like everybody can just really go his route, you know. So um, I think that she made a, she made a smart move as far as TV type of move. Uh, but we're going to see, you know, how that goes between her and Phil. <clears throat> good points there. Good points there. Mm. Speaking to the masses, what's your saying? What's your thoughts? So, <laughs> I found it interesting that when Sydney got up and wiped Frank's face, well, speaking to masses, just now, now it's bad again. I'll be in the chat then. Oh. Can you hear me? Okay. So I found it interesting when Frank got up and, uh, not Frank, but Sydney, when she got up and she wiped Frank's face, he hit her with that, ooh. When he did that little sound after she did that, I said, okay, yeah. Frank is really into Sydney compared to Moomin. It was just based off that one interaction. And so looking at that and something that uh, Tabitha put in the comment, I noticed that as well, how she was able to change that that her her position at the table and had the ex to scoot over. That, that was a really smooth move. And we have to keep in mind that Sydney and Frank are both from the same line of work. So they're very familiar with one another. Now, do we know how much that is? Not quite sure, but it's enough for them to have mentioned that they are familiar with each other. So we can just imagine how that goes. And then I realized, too, with Frank and his introductions with any lady, he likes to say, you know, hey, mama, how you doing? That's, that's his interaction with the ladies in general. And so I just question, you know, him interacting with the ex and with Sydney and Mumi at that table. It's clear the other ladies are interested in Frank, but even with that ex being at the table, I'm like, I'm not really sure if he's over that quite yet or if they have even moved on. But with Sydney, she she's very strategic and she knows how she it's clear she knows how to play the game. Because even when she said it with Phil as well, she said Oh, well, I noticed him by himself. She's that one female that noticed the quiet dude in the corner that people don't pay attention to. And so she took that as an opportunity to ask him out on a date. So she was the one that initiated it. So that's why I wonder in the way that she moved, if this will continue to work toward the end of the show for her in the case of point that she pursued Phil versus Phil pursuing her. Again, of course, there's nothing wrong with, you know, saying hello in the sense of initiation, but she asked him out on a date. So it's clear, like, Phil did not pay her any regard or any mind from the time she came on to now, and she initiated the date with him. So I would really like to see toward the end of this show how is this going to last with the whole Sydney and Phil thing. But then it's the simple fact. I don't recall, and maybe I'm, you know, somebody can correct me, but did she even mention Phil's name at the deliberating table at all? Because if she didn't, okay, well, if she didn't, that might not go well with some people who is interested in Phil that don't know that Sydney made this move behind closed doors. 
if if they weren't aware of this. And we may see some of that show up in the next episodes because it, it looks almost like a sneak attack in a sense. Nobody else knows about it but you. And it looked like it came from left field. So Sydney's very strategic in how she's playing this game right about now. I just hope that um, her interaction with Phil was genuine. I mean, they did have, you know, a nice date from what it looks like. But hopefully it's worth it. Appreciate it, Mindy. Sorry about it. Your sound was kind of going in and out, so it's a bit. Uh, there's some people who don't have a loud sound might struggle to hear you. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> I, I definitely hear you. Uh, Sydney is a strategic individual person. Um, you know, <clears throat> don't fall for her. Um, uh, don't fall for her uh, uh, innocent acts. Okay, and her beautiful face. All right, she knows what she's doing. She's playing her games. Okay, and she's gonna will people in. Um, it might be a little bit too late for Phil. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens, innit? Maybe Phil will fall for it. I don't know. Uh, maybe she's pulling her, her card, you know what I mean? So, uh, but, yeah. Okay. See where you have ask you? Yeah. I'll ask you about Sydney. No. I mean, I don't have much on Sydney. It just looks like, I mean, this is all just feels very TV stage situation with them. But if it's not, Sydney just seems to be moved by, like, if you talk to her, it seems like she sees butterflies. She kept on saying she sees butterflies, butterflies mm. flying over her head about everything and everybody. Um, I don't get why. I'm not sure why she's so impressed and what she's so impressed by. That goes for Frank. And I don't know from her date with Phil what, what made the butterflies float over her head either. So, I don't know. She's cute. The date was cute. I, I, the little popping in the gym date was was great. She looked great. Um, that's all I got though about it. I mean, it's just very superficial surface level date, but as much trouble as I give Frank, I feel like if he needs, he's going to be with anybody, he needs to be with Sydney so they can do surface level stuff together because everybody in life is not that deep. Everybody ain't deep. Frank ain't that deep. Sydney doesn't seem that deep. So they should just, they're good for each other. They should just do that. If there's going to be a real match out of the situation, that's what I think. Yeah, I hear that. Still, I'm not gonna lie to you. No one is that deep. You're right, and uh, you know, um, not not even the people. I think I think Sydney's Sydney's great. I think she got good energy. I think she, um, I think she's a lively person and and definitely attractive. I just sense the gameplay. Once I knew it's there. I bowed out like Dragon's Den, like I said before. But go on, Sean. What's your thoughts? Uh, yeah, similar. You know, similarly to what Seaway said, I think that they are a good match. Um, the only thing is, sometimes two people in that same lifestyle can cause an issue um, because she might be trying to keep up what he's doing, and he's trying to keep up what she's doing. Or maybe they'll be so busy doing their own thing that they either won't care. But you know, I do find that sometimes that causes challenges in relationships like when you have two people that are musicians two people that are actors it it, it kind of can cause um, a bit of a problem um so i think why i can see why frank is going after mumin but i don't understand why mumin is going after frank um or being open to to be with frank um because he wants that balance and i know that um Mumin could bring that. Now, Sydney, he's going to have to keep up with her because Sydney's going to get all the guys' attention. She's used to it. She's in the entertainment industry. So men are constantly approaching her. So if he's, you know, if he's got a strong constitution and he could deal with all the attention that she's going to get and not feel like it's going to jeopardize their relationship, then hey, go for it. Otherwise, it could be just a toxic mashup between the two of them. So um, that's what I think. I mean, I did see some depth when she came with those questions and that she was prepared to talk to, you know, Frank's ex. But like, I don't know. I just still, I still don't see the depth because Frank doesn't seem like, you know, he just seems like he's just in it for a good time. And 
I don't I don't think that either. And then, but you know what? Thinking about it more, the things that Sydney said, even when she was asked about kids, she kind of said, you know, down the line, everything was down the line for her. So I don't think she has a urgency to move forward with a serious relationship. So yeah, they might they might really be a good match because I think Frank's going to play and I think Sydney is not really looking to be super serious right now. You know, when she says kids, she's like, "Oh, I want to be kids. You know, I want kids down the line. I see myself as a mother in the future." It didn't seem very intentional. It didn't seem somebody that was like, "Yes, I definitely want kids in the very near future." She was like, "If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't." So that's that airy, airiness about her. So I think they might be better suited, especially because they don't, they kind of want the same things. I hear you on that. I hear you on that. I hear you on that. Yep, Sydney is a great flirt, isn't she? So she's playing a role very well, playing a role. Um, everyone, everyone's spoken, right? Uh, follow up. Okay, yeah, Corey, go for it. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, make a quick point. Uh, one of the questions that Sydney asked Frank's ex was, what made you, in so many words, what made you gravitate away from Frank? And his ex said, lack of, I think she said, lack of intention. And because of that, what, that's, what that says attention, to me, what's that, what's that again? Attention. No, I thought it was I thought it was lack of intention. I don't know. I I'll don't, double check. Let's know the comment. Attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what I got from that is that he's all talk, no action. You know, he he, he says and it makes sense to me because Frank has an answer for everything. You know, he asks every question, very you know, someone said pageant type questions, answers. So to me, it makes sense. Like he he seems to be more of a guy who's more about. I'm going I'm to sweep you off your, off your feet with what I have to say to you versus my actions for you. Um, you just don't, you just don't give me that vibe. So I just want to say that point is all. Well, I'm going to go ahead and speak real quick. Um, Sydney coming in late to the process. So of course she's going to play catch up to everybody and she's going to date all that she can. Um, Frank automatically is just somebody that she knew, so she gravitated to him off rip just because of the familiarity of it all. Um, Phil is a good looking dude, quiet dude. You know, a lot of that attracts a lot of people when you're just mysterious and you're just off in the corner minding your own business. But what I did notice on the date is that Phil was into his workout and he wasn't paying her much attention until she said something opposed to when Shiloh, him and Carrie was on a date with Donta. He was paying attention to them as they were stretching and they was working out. But on this particular one, he was into his workout. So that should be a little bit of a notion that he's not quite into her, even though he said he wanted to go on a date with her. And he was glad that she reached out and set it up. But he was really trying to get his work out on that day, I guess. And he wasn't focused on the date too much. Um, but then he also has or had three other ladies in his bag already. And it's kind of late in the process for him. So he probably didn't want to overextend himself any more than he already has. And plus, he doesn't want to break that connection that he kind of has with Shiloh too much anyway. And, you know... Uh, jumping on a new girl might just do that. So I think her making the move made it a little bit easier for him to get to know her. I do see some potential there between the two. So we'll see how it goes as it continues. But yeah, it wasn't an initial thing on Phil's part, so to speak, overall to go after her. So I just look at it more so of her just trying to catch up to everybody else because they came in a little bit later in the process. You know what, um, what you said, Jay, I just want to say this real quick, Coach. what you said, Jay, um, about him working out. I, I think it's a little bit different for men and you guys, you know, Coach and Sean, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. Like if we, if we're being invited out by a woman to do something where we can show how strong we are, we're going to focus on that workout. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to show off. That's what we do. You know, as men, 
okay, you want me to work out? Let me show you what I'm working with. Let me show you how I can do these push ups. Let me show you how I hate this dumbbell. Let me show you how I, can, how I can multitask all this. So for us, it's a little bit different. I think if he wasn't into her, he'll be sitting on the bench just watching her work out. And she's like, hey, yeah. I don't, yeah. But he's <laughs> into Shiloh. Sorry to cut you off, Corey, but he was into uh, Shiloh the same way. And on that date, they was him and Dante was standing on the wall while Shiloh and Carrie was over there doing the stretches and stuff. So that's what I was comparing it to or whatnot. So that's why I said it was the difference was there on how it was because he was definitely into Shiloh and he was definitely getting his look on while she was working out opposed to with uh, Sydney. Yeah. So, you know. I think I think well I think you make good points, but I think we'll know more after the next episode because I'm really I think he's like in between the two, and I think we're going to get a little bit more information as far as if he's really about Shiloh or if he's going to start gravitating more toward towards uh, Sydney. So uh, I'm a, I'm a whole way what you're saying right now, and we'll we'll, we'll see next next episode. Indeed, because like I said, they got a, they got some potential, but. You know, I just didn't see it uh, a total write off. And it might have been something about her that he wasn't just totally attached to at first. But as they talked, he seemed to warm up to her a little bit more. So we will see. <clears throat> I hear you. I think both of you could be potentially could be right here, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I like both points that you guys come with as well. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, I think. Um, yeah, just to add on the point. So I just because obviously I just watched it again with um, Mameen and and Sydney. Is it not interesting? And it may be because the bo- the way that both of them see Frank differently. The question was asked: What do you like about Frank? Sydney was like everything. You know, I just love everything. You know, I've told you that before. And da da da. And I was like, baby, what do you like about Frank? You are telling me everything. You know what I mean? But when he asked Mameen, Mameen says straight, listen, it's his heart. Right? So if I'm hearing two, listen, if I'm hearing those two answers, yeah. Now, I said maybe one person's a bit more detailed than the other. Maybe because, you know, um, maybe because Sydney is more of the bigger picture rather than the finer details, right? Some people see things differently. So they take in everything as an e- as an essence, but the question was very specific in the sense of what is it that drove you to, what, what is it about Frank you like? And if you can't mention something, I'm going to say something. You probably might not like him as much as you say. You, you might like him, but you ain't going to go further than that. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you might like him, you might even fancy him, but that's about it, right? Because you haven't seen any further than that. Now with Mameen, she said his heart, if I'm listening to two different answers, I'm probably more likely going to take my means answer as something that is more, uh, which will be a, for me a better answer um, because you know even even himself he picked it up. Frank actually picked it up. He said, "My means a person that um, sits back and observes, uh, observe, observes. Oh my God, observe. Y'all know what I'm saying, bro. Okay, um, and uh, you know so uh, you know I was like, oh okay, I was like okay, well then, bro, if you can see that." Uh, Mami might be a better choice. Although, although I agree, I don't think I don't see why Mami is going after him. Um, but yeah, that that answer from 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 Sydney, sussy, very very sussy, sussy sussy sussy. Mm. Okay, cool. If no one's else has got anything to add, we can shift it. If you got no one else, should you got something else now? Cool. All right, cool. Uh, I hope I haven't missed anybody. Have I missed anybody? I know I know who's last. But I'm saying Camille and Cornelius, but is anyone else I've missed in between? Na- no, no, no. Hey, Naeem, you want to talk a little bit about, we mentioned Naeem already? No. Anyone else that I've missed? Before Camille and Cornelius? I think that's it, isn't it? I can't think of one of us. You yeah, that's about. it. Because they didn't really cover everybody. Like, they didn't. I should also the it. deliberation. They didn't we didn't see Aisha on any dates or anything. So that's a bit strange, don't it? As well to say that. I don't know. I don't know if that's because they didn't show it or because she didn't have any. Like it's a bit weird that she didn't get a date, especially with Phil also thing as well. Like I hope that's production cutting out her date rather than her not being involved with the ex situation. 
Do you know well, what I'm we saying? We saw her like, on a flashback. They, oh, they, is it? They, in the deliberation, I don't know if it was Dante or somebody mentioned her in a flashback. Was, and that was, again, piss poor production. He was talking about a date we never saw. What's wrong with them? I don't know. And I was like, Aisha's yet on another date with another person. I, I don't even... I. We still haven't seen her back with Frank since the whole photo booth. I don't know what's going on, but basically somebody edited this on 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 the days on the on, <laughs> on the all night in the iPhone and all nighters, but they've been holding that coffee cup for time, blood. Because it they, this is not making no sense. People just don't I should just be in in and out of oh, it's 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 unbearable sometimes, man. Yeah, you know they're building a story. You know, so they're obviously the editing and the production is geared up to things that are going to explode and happen next. So they want to tell that story. So, man, that's it's a thing called subplot, guys. You know, so when you do a main plot, there's a subplot. That's what we need to have these storytellers understand. You know what I mean? Right. You have the main plot and then the subplot. Subplot will be these nice little dates that you guys are having in between. That would help us really understand. But no. I understand. Okay, cool. Um, let's talk about Camille and uh, Cornelius then, because ha, ah, you know, uh, <laughs> I know people got things to say about this thing. I want to know what people's thoughts are. You know, I didn't even have that many thoughts myself, so I, I, I'm interested to find out what everyone else has kind of said on this kind of topic. Uh, um, I'll Jay, start. Oh, you start. Okay, go for it. Sure. Yeah, go yeah. For it. yeah. So. Listen, lots of red flags here in terms of just the way things played out. Cornelius, I don't know what he's doing because most of the people had multiple dates going to see their exes. He's the only person that set out to have Camille. You know, he only had one option with his ex, and that's Camille. And he just was on the chopping block last episode. And it was because the rest of the ladies didn't get to know him. And here it is again. He's what he's 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 backed him his own self into a corner with Camille. And at this point, it's only his fault because he can't get out of this Camille matrix. And I don't I don't understand. Um, you know, then. It's another his ex seem lovely, Cornelius, but it, another mismatch. It didn't seem like they went well together. It was giving me like a best friend vibe. Like we went to high school together almost. And I don't know. Again, she seemed like a lovely woman. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and then the questions that she asked Camille, um, is, has he, is he a lifelong celibate? Is he uh, a, a reformed virgin? Like what's, what's this? So every relationship... It's always around him and not having sex. And then she was like, well, I don't know. I haven't really, I don't know as much now, but so it's, I don't get it. Like the questions just seemed off. Camille's answers seemed canned. Um, seems like she was trying to contain the crazy and just appear somewhat normal. But the minute she walked through the door, she was, Who's, whose heels are these? Somebody else's heels are these? It's like, whoa, like relax. She's ready to pounce. So, but obviously he loves it. You know, at this point, I'm not even going to criticize her because he loves it. He loves it. He doesn't do anything about it. Tommy talked to him, tried to, um, you know, ask him if he saw any red flags. He just sat there with a blank stare. It's like, and he is definitely, you know, when, when I heard the ladies talking about um, whether it's the, the the lady viewers or the the women that have kind of spoken up um, from the cast that the men aren't choosing, he is the ultimate one because I haven't seen him once go after any particular woman. He was always being pursued, whether it was Courtney before she got eliminated and now Camille. She's doing the pursuing. I don't see him in pursuit of any of the other ladies on the show. And he did not try to get the attention of any other woman. Cause usually you get the feedback and you're like, all right, let me get my act together. Let me try to move a little differently. And I, again, could it be production? Sure. But I don't think so. I think he just 
for whatever reason, he feels like he needs to be locked in with uh, Camille, and he's all in. Uh, I, I did see the painting. I'll leave it to the ladies to break down the painting, but I had to rewind my DVR and look back at that painting. And yeah, I'm going to leave it there. And to whoever else is next can unpack that part. <laughs> Y'all even wave your hair. Mm, okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Who's next? See where you open your mic, you're going, yeah? Sure. I mean, let's just be honest, right, about these ex situation. Like, I thought about it. I'm like, I'm going to give them a little bit of grace because if I was on the show and I had to find an ex, I'm going to have to reach back some years because my recent ones are probably pissed off about something, right? But with that caveat, I'm going to give them some grace with the amount of years we got to reach back. But the ex, again, with the math not mathing, this ex was giving like they were chilling together in Sunday school to each other from the playground. They used to draw pictures like that is what the ex is giving me. It's not it's not giving me like we were friends now, but we used to be lovers. It was giving me that they were never in any way made together. Um, and I think that says a lot. That picture, that painting, that rainbow painting. I just feel like we just need to take a moment of silence for that rainbow painting. And I will let the chat break that down. Because that rainbow painting, I think, is filling in the gaps here. Um, next, we have the ex asking, uh, you know, getting straight to the point with, with um, Camille. And asking her questions and yeah Camille is giving these very pageant uh direct answers you know if God is ahead of my life you know there's nothing I can do type I can't do type answers whatever I don't I just feel like Camille throws in God as like a buzzword it's like icing on the cake like caramel on type of a type of top of her ice cream I don't get what's going on but it's a problem like Sean said as well I don't it has has Cornelius been celibate his whole life is he a virgin? What is going on? The story is not making sense. And at the end of the day, is not Cornelius is not going to go after any girl on the show because he's comfortable hiding behind Camille's crazy. Because if he goes to somebody else, somebody else is going to dig into what his problem is. And he doesn't want that. Why else would he be warned time and time again he needs to pursue women and not do it? If he, pursue, if he pursues Azadia, for example, she's going to dig into what the hell is going on. He doesn't want that. He'll be eliminated before he pursues a woman on the show. So I don't know what's going on with Cornelius, but I don't know if he really should be on his show with all the flags that I've seen. He almost got his, more flags than Camille does, and that's saying a lot. They both, I think, have some type of agreement about what they're doing. Um, and it's coming across very disingenuous. I feel like everyone can see through it. So I think, oh, the ex didn't like Camille's multiple engagements. Who would? Um, and Camille still thinks it's cute that she's been engaged three times. So that's what I got. Okay. So um, this is my thoughts on Cornelius. Um, I now have a slightly new way of thinking when it comes to Cornelius. I said from the beginning, he wasn't giving masculine vibes. The guy said he used to model. So, okay. He was okay to have a picture, the type of picture. Interesting. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking that he is a guy who possibly plays for both teams. So I pick up that. I'm telling you why I pick up that vibe. I pick up that vibe because um, when he met with Zadia, when Zadia was talking to him about, you know, the things that uh, that he hasn't been doing, he hasn't been reaching out to anyone. He, he was very in a shell. He seemed like an innocent child, just looking down at the table, fiddling with his fingers. It's just, he, he just doesn't ooze any type of masculinity to me. Like look into her eyes when you talk to her. Like, it's nothing wrong with that. Um, so to me, I think that's a vibe that I call from him. 
the vibe that uh, that I feel as far as him playing for both teams is this whole big thing about him being celibate and not wanting to have sex or marriage and making it a faith thing. I think for him, he has to make a decision when it comes to where he lies with, with, with one side or the other. I could be going a little bit too deep into this, very much so, but these are my thoughts um, from what I've seen in the previous episode. His interaction with Zadia, his uh, interaction with any other woman is very timid, is very light. So I'm not sure. It's either that, what I said before, or he's experienced some type of trauma that we don't know about that uh, wasn't given on the show. But I think that it's something about him that seems a bit off as to why a woman like Camille is someone who would attract him. You know, he's attracted to that woman. I mean, even after having that conversation with Zadia, why not invite her as well to meet, you know, the the, the ex friend, the, I mean, the ex girlfriend. So it's just like I just don't, I don't get. It's just a lot of things about him that just seems a little bit far left to me. So I pick up a vibe that he may be uh, bisexual, and he hasn't come out yet. He hasn't talked to anyone yet about it, and you know, that's his choice. It's his choice, but. The vibes that I'm picking up, that's what I get. So I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but um, that's me. Yeah, I'm not worried about his sexuality because I'm not interested in a man at all. So I'll move on from that point right there. Um, as far as the show is concerned and him and Camille, the fact that Tommy is sitting here trying to give you red flags warnings and you still talking about some, uh, I guess I see them. I, I mean, I don't know, brother, that's a red flag in itself. The fact that you can't see red flags, you can't pick up on something being wrong with the person that you interested in or what that who is obviously out of control, who is questioning you about your ex and when you're going to be done talking to him and all this stuff like that, like who's belittled you in front of millions of people on t national TV where the cameras was rolling. Oh, okay, brother, I don't know how many more red flags that you need to get by, but him not dating anybody else why the man is sitting here basically granting him passes and saving camille for him on the show um i guess so they don't have to deal with her or be the one to vote her off if he get voted off for whatever reason and it seems it's both ways with the women so at this point why do i need to entertain anybody else i'm gonna be saved anyway just because as long as she's here they're gonna keep saving her for me which is dumb because he won't even publicly claim her to the guys. They're just all writing it off, you know, as, well, you pretty much just stuck with her. So we're just going to leave it at that. But he's not saying this is where I want to be. He didn't give Camille the green light to say this is where I'm at. He hasn't gave Zadia. He hasn't told anybody else that Camille is where he wants to be, not even the men. So that's a big red flag as it is on his end and Camille should be taking notes to that part that all this time that she's invested in saying that you are my boyfriend you are my man you are my everything you're my king my heart my love all of this stuff that he has not said any of these things back to you why you keep wasting your time and the ex was asking great I'm his best friend questions you know, uh, I wasn't mad at her for probing into his life, but clearly it doesn't matter because no matter what you ask and what Camille says, he doesn't see the red flags in any of it. The ex is looking like, bro, are you crazy? She's been a runaway so many times. Uh, and all she's going to tell me is that we've talked about it. Your her friends is telling you that she's a runaway. And yet you're still here trying to pretend like you're going to be something different. She's going to run over you, get bored like the exes say, and then move on. 
If you pr happen to propose to her before that time she decides to move on, well, you're going to be number four. Congratulations. Um, but outside of that, I'm kind of over these two. Uh, he don't want to take signs and, you know, she done claimed him forever. So it is what it is. We'll see them at the finish line, I guess. Coach, I just think it's hard to talk about this. I mean, I, I appreciate, you know, Corey Black for saying what needed to be said. I just feel like when you grow up in the church, personally, like I have as a PK, you see a lot of men in particular in very traditional or Southern households or religious households using religion, celibacy, and a lot of things to cover up, th cover up things about themselves that they don't particularly want to talk about. And so, of course, we don't want to, you know, push anybody in direction that they're not ready to go. But when when behavior is not adding up, e.g., you know, staying with Camille and this very toxic behavior, the, the intuition of minds doesn't believe that Cornelius doesn't see the red flags in Camille. It just doesn't make sense. I, I, I don't believe he doesn't see it. I believe there's other reasons why he feels like it's more advantageous to stay in this relationship on, and in this position. And maybe there's the reasons why it was advantageous for him to come on this show. That we're not privy to, I don't know. But I can't in good faith say that he doesn't see it. He sees it. Everyone sees it. Nephew Tommy sees it. He's not bothered by it because he has other things that he's focusing on. And it just, that that really is what it is. And especially women, we got to be, you got to be vigil, vigilant with the signs, trying to figure out what's going on. You know, someone says they're celibate and stuff ain't adding up. Why is he celibate? What is what is his, his drive? What is his goal? Um, we haven't got that big picture. It just seems like there's there's more to it. So, Hey, I, I hear what you're saying. Obviously, the American market is different to the UK market. So, um, you know, whilst I, I think, uh, whilst obviously we have a, you know, a strong LGBTQ presence, um, I think it's more rarer to kind of have a lot of people coming out in the church and being gay. Maybe not. Maybe that's. I mean, they do it. I'm not saying that they don't, but I'm saying I think it's maybe like you like you guys are saying you you know I've seen a lot of that kind of stuff so maybe that's why I can't really pick up on on those things um uh, maybe he's more of a maybe he's maybe some maybe he's a virgin maybe he's a virgin maybe he hasn't had that sex mm Maybe we don't. I mean, who knows? Hmm. I, I guess we'll have to find out. Mm. Mm. Um. Yeah. It's just it's just some some flags that I saw. You know, just in um one is attire, and then mm. like he has some boots on on one episode that were pretty high up. Uh, <laughs> in my opinion, I'm just I'm being I'm being serious. You know, like it was uh, pretty high up. And he had every lace strapped up in those boots and I was like I, I didn't know but <laughs> and like I said nothing wrong with it it's just that for the purposes of this you know I find okay now we get we get them get a little bit of I was outside the box just a little bit but I find it disrespectful in a sense if you are straddling because you have to give a woman an option to choose so if that's what you want to do then to give a woman an option to choose. And I'm just leaving it right there um but yeah, everyone has their own fight to make, you know what I mean? So if he's battling with something, then more respect to him, help you get through it, but just get to a point where you can be honest with yourself. That's all. I think Camille is fully abreast of whatever's going on. I'll just say that. I don't think she's a victim. Whatever whatever he's straddling with, they done came to a conclusion and they rocking out on this show to do whatever they got to do. So, I mean, in many cases, I'll be like, oh, she doesn't know, you know, whatever, whatever they got going on, they agree upon it because they both try not to be eliminated. When honestly, if they were so into each other, they should just go off with each other and, and be together. But instead, you know, they're trying to 
keep keep whatever they they got going on going on. So but he has a good job and I you know Camille she works too. I don't but but nowadays in 2021 clout is all people want. They don't everything is for clout. Everyone got to be seen, everyone has to be now everyone's an influencer, everyone wants followers. So even though it may not seem like it makes sense why people want to get on TV and do this in 2021, people want influence and, and attention more than they even want. Even when this type of attention can actually affect their real money. So you never know why people do stuff and get on these shows and do. do. I hear you. I hear you. Again, I'm not disagreeing at all. Not disagreeing at all. You know, um, yeah, people do things for clout. So, you know, it could be, um, you know, I, 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 yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think he's ignorant of the red flags just by the way that they spoke to him. I think he's not ignorant of it. I think he knows it there, but mm, I have to wait and see on this one day, you know. Mm, mm. Okay. Anyone else? The last final thoughts Anyone on this, on this topic? Everyone said their their Jews said their peace. Okay. Mm, okay. Well, listen, it's been a good conversation on that. Uh I think that's really the gist of that the dating that they have uh, on this episode. But I'm I'm not this show has tied me out, man. I think tied out because it's like nobody has got a match. They're, they're not even close. Do you know what I mean? I can't even lie to myself and be like, oh, you know, they could make it. Nah, no one on this thing seems like they're going to be even close to it. Potentially maybe Phil and Shiloh, but even then I'm like, still not very hopeful about them. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not about it. But let me let me get Sean to give us a uh, give us a, a benediction and then we'll, we'll jump off. Okay. Uh, <laughs> try to <laughs> come together from that. But, um, I, I just think like this this season, I don't know between you know being on the heels of maths and now this, it's it's like we 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 are grasping to find a love story that's just not gonna be found. Um at the end of the day, <clears throat> it doesn't look like uh, you know, we talk just talked about Cornelius and Camille. They don't she, listen, I don't wanna say it, but she needs to go. She needs to be the next to go. The attitude the approach, the body language, she got to go. And then right after her, Cornelius can go because he's not, he's, he does not understand the assignment or maybe he's on a different assignment, but it's to find, it's to find somebody that's ready for a serious relationship. And what are we seeing with those two? Nothing. Um, then we have Moomin um, and I, and she is a beautiful voice, the voice of an angel, but her her picking her choices are off so again she's not understanding the assignment and finding somebody that's on the same level field as her cuz i don't see it unless we're missing something um then we've got phil phil's the player he is the mvp um and has all the ladies attention so good for phil uh it it looks like shallow but let's see more uh so uh, i'm looking forward to seeing more of aisha um, and unfortunately, Zadia is the, the the she's the best defense you want on your on your side. She you want her on your team for defense because she's that's that's what she's doing right now. But Freddie for love, again, not seeing it from her either. So unfortunately, I don't know. I don't know about this season. I don't know if anybody's ready for anything. Um, but I'm ready to see what happens next because the resort and the vacation looks like it's about to be popping. So I'll uh, turn it back to you, Coach. Yeah, yeah, man. Listen, it's been a, it's been, a, it's been a good conversation. We we had a good, good conversation. Talked about some really deep things as well. So, audience, it's been amazing. It's been popping. It's been great. I think this might be the last one before I go to Ghana. So, I'll try and see. Maybe I can squeeze in Saturday next week before I go. Um, you know, another live in, and, and we'll do it. Um, before I go, um, but yeah, this 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 uh, this season has been hmm. Well, well, 
it's been one one, you know. And uh, unfortunately, we're here. Uh, but uh, someone said, "My sleeper." I'm not, you know, I'm not even sleeping. I'm just tired, but I'm tired of it. I'm tired of RT. Like I'm no, I'm not enjoying it this season at all, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's paying my bills right now, so I'm not gonna quit like Cornelius either. So I'm gonna stick in it. I'm gonna sit beside him. Okay, I'm gonna sit beside him. That's my man right there. I'm gonna sit beside him. Him and Camille, I'm gonna sit beside him. Okay, they pay my bills right now. Um, but no, real spit though. Um, yeah, it's, it's not been it's not been the greatest of, of seasons. Um, but you know what? Sometimes it gets like that. Maybe maybe we will look back at this season and think to ourselves, great season. Maybe we'll look back at it and think, great season. Maybe we won't. Who knows? Uh, but listen, guys, uh, yeah, no worries, Jay. By all means, take control of the, the lives when I'm not around. Flow, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you guys have the same amount of fun. Uh, but yeah, audience, we will see you again next week. And then I think there's a break for RTL until the 31st um, as well. So we'll see you. Out. Someone said I'm going to come back with a, a, a Ghanaian wife. You don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I am, I am, I am. Um, but yeah, listen, guys, like, subscribe, click on the bell button, and uh, we will see you again very, very soon. Oh, wait, wait, Corey, you wanted to give your prediction? You want to give your prediction? Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah, before yeah. you do, before you do. Okay. I owe somebody a, a, a song. Sorry. Tyronda, I know you're in the chat. Sorry. <laughs> it's meant to your birthday, and I missed the song, so I'm going to sing it for you. My voice is croaky. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Tyronda. Happy birthday to you. How old are you now? 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 Blessings, Tyronda. Yes, Corey, give your prediction and we bounce off. Oh, so you're going to do it like that? <laughs> <laughs> you're not just going to let that just fly by. <laughs> You came out, you came up with, you know, I'm going to go basic. I'm going to give it just a little sound. Trying to, trying to be like you, bro. Then you was like, hold on now. I might, somebody might be watching. Let me, get, <laughs> let me go ahead and get this record deal. All right. So my predictions, ladies, uh, for next week, uh, for this upcoming week is to be eliminated. I think it's going to be uh, Cornelius because uh, I don't think women really think like men do. Like the fellows, like, hey, Cornelius, you know, you like this woman. We're not going to eliminate her. I think the women was like, hey. We're not having a connection. He got to go. So I think it'll be uh, Cornelius or Naeem will be one of the two that's going to leave. Um, but if everybody was smart about it, they will start off with Frank. But I think it's going to be between Naeem and um, Cornelius. Those are my predictions for next week. Not for that, Corey. Not for that. Not for that. Well, audience, you came out strong. 800 of you. We appreciate you. Listen, keep enjoying the show. Um, and maybe maybe we'll find another new show for 2022. Someone sent me a link for a new show, but I won't have time to get into it. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, listen, we will be you know 2022. We're gonna start our our relationship our relationship talk lives again. So you know, I, I kind of took a little break off it because it's hella killer when you're doing three lives a week. It's it's difficult, trust me. But we'll start in 2022 again. We'll have our open panels, open discussions, uh, have different topics to talk about. Um, you guys will get to see the men as well live as well. Um, we'll have that, you know, when we once a month or whatever, we'll get the men together to do live um, and and get their points of view on certain subjects. And maybe we'll get an all females panel as well if they're, if they're down to do it as well. So uh, it was going to be some great stuff in 2022. Listen, it's going to be amazing. All right, please enjoy the Christmas. Enjoy the uh, the Xmas and the, the New Year's. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And make sure you support uh, my team as well and their and their channels Sean Unfiltered Seaway's coming soon she ain't told you yet but she's coming soon <laughs> trying to set her up <laughs> Corey Corey Black's also got his channel as well Black Main Media he's got his channel he's got two you got two in it bro you got two channels yeah, Corey, innit? yeah you have two I have two you got two channels yeah yeah Okay, you got two channels. And then another round, you already know, guys, as well. That's a joint between uh, Jay and, and, and Sean as well. So listen, please, make sure you follow their channels as well. Get them to a 1,000 and plus. Um, I see, Sean, you're quite, you're doing quite well already, bro. You're like 500 already, isn't it? You're quite, you're quite well off already. Doing, Sean's doing. smoking. Sean's yeah, smoking, he's smoking, man. He's smoking yeah. hard right now, Kez. Uh, good stuff, uh, man. Mm, see, wait, it won't take you long, baby. If you do yours, you'll be there a 1,000 within no time. You know what I mean? Do one new and mark, innit? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I appreciate the encouragement. 
<laughs> no worries, no worries. Uh, guys, thank you again once more. Please enjoy yourselves and uh, we'll see you again soon. Araba, we know we're waiting for you. I need updates. You already know what we're talking about. Appreciate it, guys. Still locked on. <laughs> Stay loaded.